Hey guys, welcome back to another week of No, you are not on the wrong channel. You're not on my vlog channel. You're at the right place, but um, I have just not planned my morning very well. So I was getting ready and I looked at the time and realized I was not gonna have time to sit down and film my intro like I thought I would. Um, but I am getting ready. Did I say welcome to another week of? Welcome to another week of. Today I am heading to North Shore Tropicals, but before that, Alice and I are actually going to this nearby plant shop called Trims. And um, I'm looking for fake plants. Never thought I'd see the day, but um, I talked about this in another video where um, I was gonna be doing some, a different setup in one of my exos and I need fake plants to do it. I know, sounds crazy. But I'm hoping to find some like really nice Spanish moss if I can, Spanish moss. Yeah, I just hope that they have things in stock because if they don't, then I need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what is gonna happen with this XO. But anyway, after we do that, um, we're gonna be at North Shore Tropicals for the rest of the day. And she's doing a live sale. Me and Alice usually try and help her out on live sale days. I'm not quite sure like what I'm gonna be filming at the shop today. I would like to show you the behind the scenes of like what goes down on live sale days just because it's a whole it's a whole orchestrated event like i feel like some people think that she just like grabs a bunch of plants and then just like prices it and then sells it like it's a whole thing so yeah it's pretty impressive so i'll see how much she's willing to let me film um sometimes she doesn't want to be on camera which i respect because i have days like that too but yeah that's what today is going to be hopefully uh i can get some good footage for you guys today but other than that, we've got a busy, busy week. I feel like I've been really like overwhelmed with all the changes that's been happening in the house in terms of moving. Like you guys know that I moved my office into my plant room. Like I've been moving shelves and rearranging things and then purging a bunch of plants. And in that process, it's like things had just gotten so crazy and messy and I, I don't know how to feel about it. I am very overwhelmed. So anyway, um, that's what today is going to be. I do have a bunch of plants to sell today, like actually quite a lot. Um, and you would have seen it in, oh, my tent, my tent update video. I showed you the plants that I was going to be selling. And now that they're all compiled, there's actually so many of them. And kind of sad but I'm also just like wow I can't believe I'm actually able to offload this much and it feels really good so I'm gonna quickly show you guys what I'm gonna be selling and then we're gonna get out of here good morning Pudge do you want to say hi to all your friends and say thank you for tuning in to another week of and we hope it's gonna be a good one you guys I am depressed look at all of his white hairs that are like coming in on his face I can't handle this Anywho, I have an entire little cart here filled with plants. There is a lot. Um, kind of sad to see these two go. And this one freaking ripped when I pulled it out of the shelf. I'm so sad, I'm so dumb. Um, but yeah, everything's been out of like the prop boxes and tent for like three days now. Nothing has wilted, nothing has shriveled up. I was a little worried about this guy. Um, but he's nice and perky. So everyone's looking really good for today. Everything has been pest treated So I'm feeling good about letting these ones go. Also, I want to show you guys don't look at my dirty floors Don't look everybody don't look. I purchased this a day ago, and I only installed it last night and look how many gnats It caught. Oh my gosh I'm so happy. This is like so I was reading the reviews and some people were like, oh, it doesn't work I only caught like one fly after a week. This is one night and um, I only bought one because it's kind of pricey. It was like 40 bucks for this one thing and it turns on. So it's like a UV, UV lamp thing. And I'm only using it at night because then it's attracted to the light, obviously. But um, I'm just gonna be moving this thing around. I'm starting it in the kitchen because that's where a lot of the fruit flies are. And yeah, uh, so far so good. I will link this in the description.
All right, I just wanna show you guys a few of the ones that I think are pretty cool. So we have a queen of hearts here. The emergent leaf is so buttery and good. So many Lux <laughs> hybrids, so many forgetty eyes. Um, we've got two red Andersons, they're super pretty. This new leaf is Gorgina. Some VGI Super Narrows. I think this is an RA5. I've got mine down here. I'm so sad to let it go. Some Lux. Alvos. I really like, where's the one that I wanted? Um, oh, it's right here. Look at this. So pretty. I think I am gonna get one of these. And then this Ring of Fire is trying to be a caramel marble. <laughs> And then more of her seedlings. So pretty good mix of everything, I would say. Yeah. There she is. Vienna. <laughs> okay, a video. Are we tall enough here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You need to be like here so I look normal. Or does this need to be closer? Yeah. <laughs> A little bit more full. Yeah, that's good. I look like a. Don't go from this angle! <laughs> go from this <laughs> angle! In three, two, one. You're not. Oh, yeah. no, don't. No, don't. I'm doing it. What the heck? Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Okay, I'm testing something out. It doesn't work for me! No. Maybe it doesn't work on live. Wait, Wait what, what was it that it picked up <laughs> What did it work on before? Um, Stories? I don't know. I just saw someone doing it and it was like, Frank, a check what mark. What? Maybe it's on TikTok. Not working. No. Well, try the heart, try the, yeah. <laughs> no! no! Three or more, it is a set price. <clears throat> Am I already? No, I spilled something earlier. I oh. don't slip on that leg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn it. <laughs> we are only how many brain cells? Not many. I can't even count. Yeah, what? Five. We're five brain cells today. So um, we got Anna and Jose in the back. Hi. All right. First up, we've got a uh, VCI Super Narrow. The code on this one is 39, and it's $80. $80 for this one.
everything is back in bins now. Her system yeah, is flawless, but yeah. this is the first live sale where everything's sold. Not one plant has gone unsold. So cool. Frankie, you wanna say hi? Frankie? Frankie? Oh, hi. Frankie? No, where's, where's Charmaine? Frankie? He's like Anna. He's like, what's Anna cool. doing? Aww. Where's your ball? No, where's your turkey? Where's your turkey? Your turkey! He's so cute. Where's your, where's your turkey? He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I know, what am I? Frankie, your turkey. turkey, turkey! Right there! <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be the worst angle of all time, but I forgot my tripod in the car. And the last thing I wanna do right now is go downstairs and get it. Anyway, obviously I just got back from Lauren's. Seriously, I don't do jack crap. I don't do jack crap during those live sales. I just stand there and hand plants to Lauren. But after, <laughs> I am so tired. It's like, it's like I've had like a full day of work. I'm always like so beat after the sale. So I'm tired right now, but I have a lot, I have actually have a lot to show you. This was a very unexpected day. So I had a little tiny haul from Lauren's shop. I'm gonna show you guys what I got from Trims, showed you what I picked up before I head home, and then I have a very special and exciting unboxing, <laughs> and Lauren just texted me about it right now. Um, so yeah, I probably have, I don't know, another half an hour with you guys. So okay, I'm gonna start with the stuff I got from Lauren's shop. So um, today, Anna, 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 the sweetest Anna, she um, she's like, I have something for you, and it was for your birthday, or it's for my birthday. By the time you guys watch this, my birthday would have already passed. It was on the 15th, but she would have heard in a YouTube video that I was really regretful about selling my Euphorbia Lactea White Ghost. And she freaking got one for me. And it's so cute. This light is too bright. She was like apologizing for the size, but you guys, once these things get going, they don't stop. And I think most people here know that I am trying to limit the plants that I have, downsize things, I've been chopping things like crazy. So this is like perfect. This just scratches that itch. I'm so happy I have one again. Thank you so much, Anna. That was so sweet of, ugh, she's just so sweet. Like, just so thoughtful and so kind. I love her so much. She is not gonna be really working at the shop anymore because she's going to school and <laughs> I'm sad. I'm really sad. Okay, the next one, actually I have three of them. The next three are very exciting seedlings. So this is a collaboration between Lauren and I. You guys probably didn't even notice, but my Anthurium Hoff X has not been in my house for a while. She's home now, but she wasn't home for like months because she was living at Lauren's. And that is because we hybridized her and um, we crossed a my Hoff with her red crystal. And now we have babies. We sold a bunch today during the live sale. Um, they sold like hotcakes. There's still so many more that need to be repotted, but you guys, I am so freaking excited for this cross. So I'm gonna try and make myself small. I'm gonna throw in mom and dad next to me and show you what the mother, mother and father plants look like. The Hoff X, I don't know if it really is Hoffmanii, some kind of Hoffmanii hybrid, whatever, but I love it because it has such a dark leaf with really, really muted green venation, um, but the reddest, reddest abaxial. Like it keeps that red and it's just so magical. And then you have the red crystallinum, which is a red cr crystallinum, arguably one of the prettiest anthurium out there, in my opinion. And so I just think that this is a really exciting cross. Like I'm curious to see if it's gonna have muted venation like the Hoff, if, if it's gonna have silvery venation, like the red crystal, what the back seals are gonna look like. I am just so like curious. So anyway, I brought home three of them. I told Lauren, I just kind of want to like watch a few grow, um, but for the most part, they're gonna be sold. Uh, but that's really exciting. And my Hoff X is pushing up another inflow. So I think I'm gonna take her back to Lauren's shop and see if maybe we can put like King of Spades, King of Spades pollen on it. I think that would be really cool. So this one, um, these actually need to go back in the prop bin. It was in a little dome, and so I don't want it to go into shock. So I'm gonna just cover these really quick. Um, I'm realizing I forgot to bring home one thing from the shop. It, she 
gave me a really really big serpents cutting philodendron serpents cutting i have a serpents in here i think i'm just going to chuck it at the wall because it hates me and it hates life so I'm going to start over with her plant. So thank you, Lauren, for that. But she also gave me a birthday gift. So if you have been tuning in to Lauren's website restocks or her live sales, you know that she brought this, this plant in or these plants in several months ago. And I have not stopped oogling over them. I have not stopped drooling over them. And finally, <laughs> I get to bring one home. So this one is an Anthurium doriaki crossed with a red crystallinum. And you guys cannot tell me that that emergent leaf is not everything. I just, I love it so much. It's like, it has all the coolest features of the red crystal, but then as it gets bigger, it has that like really nice round doriaki shape. I'm like, yeah, this was, this hybrid was made for me. Yep. And now I have her and I'm so happy. It's been so long. It's just, it was a little bit out of my price range for a while, but yeah, Lauren gave this to me for my birthday and I'm so happy. So hopefully you can see up close, really pink sinus. The tippy tippy tops of the mid ribs are like a pink color as well. Pink um, leaf margins, super silvery venation on the older leaf. You can still see a bit of that red on there, not as much as the emergent, obviously, but it has kind of the leaf color um, and venation of the red crystal, but then it's got like the doriaki leaf shape. It's just so good. So I'm so happy to have this, seriously. I'm like just so over the moon and stoked. The next thing I got is pretty cool. It's not a plant, but I finally got some predatory mites. Um, you guys have been screaming at me screaming at me over the last year to get predatories and I've done the mite thing in the past I've done it with thrips. I've done it for spider mites, but it just like wasn't in my budget to be re-upping that often But since now I'm in like a I find to be myself to be in a pretty good place Like I feel like I've worked so hard this year to keep Everything sort of at bay like I got rid of the mealy bugs I got rid of the thrips and now I'm just dealing with spider mites, but it's really not even that bad anymore, which is a miracle because I felt like at one point it was just like a full blown infestation to the point where I was like, maybe I should just start over, <laughs> like start over, throw away all these plants or just cut everything back down to stumps. I was so close, you guys, but I'm kind of glad that I, I stuck it out, but it was, it's been a hell of a year. So now that I feel like I've worked hard enough to like get everything in a good place, I do think that as long as Lauren is ordering these, I think I'll always like have a couple on me. So I picked up 40 sachets of the Spickle Ultimites and it's from Coppert. And this is a pretty aggressive um, predatory bug for spider mites. And I'm basically going to just disperse it throughout my collection. Um, my recommendation for enclosed spaces, like my tent, I probably do one like every two plants or like on one shelf. I'd maybe at least have like two or three sachets. Sachets. I'm sorry, you guys. I know it's sachets. I always say sachet. Sachets. Two or three sachets in an outdoor area like a shelf in my living room i'd want one on every single plant and that's because i do them i do think these ones are more tolerant to low humidity and low temps but i think they hatch best in higher temps so on my outdoor shelf i'm gonna try and do one every other plant um it really wasn't quite in my budget to do one on every single plant in my living room or else i'd probably need like 150 sachets and they're like a dollar each or a dollar fifty each so not quite in my budget but i think what i'm gonna do is put them on the plants that are like heavy on the spider mites usually dean mcdowell gloriosum in here like this whole shelf here has spider mites which is why they're all kind of like isolated on their own and it's why my scalp room is not doing great so i think each of these will have their own sachet you guys kind of get it once I disperse everything this week and I feel like I might need more, I think I'll pick some up if she has any left. So really excited to have that. Um, that's everything. No. Oh, this is not that exciting. I re-upped on perlite. I just, 
my soil bin <laughs> my soil bin is so pathetic oh it's over there I have not had fur bark for a while I haven't had a lot of perlite so I re-upped on a bit of perlite and I stopped by PetSmart and got the biggest bag of fur bark so this is the bark that they use for reptiles it's fur bark um, I find that it doesn't degrade uh, like a lot of like the cheaper barks this whole bag is only $35 so so much cheaper compared to like the other stuff that you would get from Wilgro brand. I think the Wilgro brand, it's like this size bag for $10 of bark. And it's not even really the grade that I like. I like that these ones are a little bit smaller. It's like the same size that my Orchiata is. Um, so I really, I needed this so bad. I picked up a clamp lamp. So I have been having the hardest time finding a light to fit my damn Soltech bulb. It's like all of the track track lights and spotlights, the diameter isn't wide enough for the Soltech bulb. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the clamp bulb in the plant room since it doesn't need to be fancy. So I'm gonna see if this fits. If this doesn't fit, I'm doing away with the Soltech bulb. Um, so hold on one second. I just wanna see if this sucker fits because <laughs> I know that this grow bulb can fit like super large bulbs, but for some reason I'm just skeptical. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, but I gave in and I got the Soltech lights. I just could not resist the color temperature. It's just too perfect. It's so beautiful. I can't deny that. I can be a hater all I want and be a cheapy cheapo, but the, the color temperature is just so perfect. And um, I grabbed two of them. So hopefully one, one is enough for my living room, hopefully. And then I'm using one in here. So I don't exactly know where I'm gonna clamp this to, to be fully honest with you guys. That's gonna be another thing in itself, but. All right, so we're sticking out, oh God. We're sticking out a little just by a smidge, but it's not the end of the world. It feels kind of loose, that's what she said. But yeah, it fits. So I just have to figure a way to clamp it because I'm using this to light this XO above me and my Monstera on top of my other XO, which is really high. Ideally, I'd love to get this like on the ceiling somehow, but that I just don't think that's gonna happen. So anywho, um, finally have a lamp <laughs> that fits my Soltec lights. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to show you is the little haul from the store trims. So the exos that I'm going to be doing is this one right here and the one above it because it just looks like a barren wasteland and it just looks awful. So in this week of, we're going to try and make it look kind of cute. So what I got was a little fake air plant. This thing is pretty long. I don't know if I can like I don't know if I can remove this all together because I don't really need this whole stick because you're supposed to use these for like bouquet arrangements and stuff. But this air plant looks pretty dang spot on. Like it's even fuzzy and I really like, I cannot keep an air plant alive to save my life. And so a fake one is kind of like the next best thing and it's easy to fake. So with that one, I also got this little tiny air plant, it looks so real. I just have to find a way to remove the little stick that it's on. But I think that would be really cute because I'm going to be putting like cork, but cork, what was I going to say? Cork wood, cork wood, driftwood. I'm going to hang them up on the grids. And then I'm also going to be hanging some fake Spanish moss. So. I know that this does not look exactly like real Spanish moss, but I would say that it's pretty stinking close. And since it's just gonna be like a backdrop and I'm gonna actually have plants that are like covering it and it's just gonna be like an accent, something so that I'm not just staring at the back, like the black, like the white wall behind the XO. Um, so I thought this was really cute. This thing is pretty large, so I may actually cut off like a little piece of it down here and use it somewhere else, but I thought this Spanish moss was pretty, was pretty good. So we're gonna try and make that work. 
I also got a Hooperzia. Hooperzia. This looked pretty dang real to me, I thought. So this one will go into a different XO. And I don't know, I just think it looks so, I, I just, I believe it, okay? I know it's plastic. I know you guys all can tell it's fake, but I think that once everything is put in there, it's just gonna look really good. And there was this little broken off piece at the store and I asked if I could buy it and she just gave it to me. So they're really nice there. Um, and then the last thing I got is this fern. And this one is not going into my EXO. This one's actually going to go into my bathroom. So what I'm thinking of doing is... I don't know if I can... I don't know if I can bend that, but I was thinking of just hanging this from my shower. I was trying to find like fake eucalyptus, but I'm like, if I'm going to do eucalyptus, I might as well... <laughs> have it be real so that at least it can like infuse the smell. So I was like, whatever, let's just do something that's just like, I don't know, that'll make it look really lush and cute. And the little artwork that I have on my, um, in the frames in there, they're very like foresty and not really, I don't feel like eucalyptus would really match with it, but like a fern would. So I'm gonna, I'm just like gonna hang this from the shower head and if anything, maybe I'll just like spritz it with essential oils and stuff so that when I do take a shower, it like infuses the smell. But I thought this was pretty good too. So um, here I am, fake plant girly. I think I have faith in myself that I can make it work. I don't know if you guys at this point have faith in me, but I have a vision and I think I can bring it to life. And I, I just thought it was really cool that there's this whole plant shop dedicated to just like fake plants and like some of them were like really bad obviously I'm just like oh my god I would never touch that with a 10 foot pole but I felt like these were okay so that's what I got from there and oh my gosh here we go grand finale so I mentioned woohoo tropicals in a previous video and um I I was just like why don't I follow them like on Instagram because like they have cool plants and I like to like follow different growers just to see kind of like what they're growing what they're releasing and um, so I followed them and then they like messaged me pretty shortly after I got to talk to Paulina who works there who's really really nice <clears throat> just a fungus snap she's like I love yours and Alice's videos so her Josh and Brian Brian is the one who owns woohoo tropicals um, they apparently all picked out a few plants for each of us and if you guys want to watch this video that's gonna go up or not gonna go up if you guys want to watch how we divvied up these plants I'm gonna link it in the description me and Alice both posted a video on it so hers is part one mine was part two so Thank you, Paulina, for even, you know, for even doing this. I am so excited. So I, me and her have no idea what they're sending. And I had asked Paulina to conceal the IDs because we thought it would be pretty cool for me and Alice to like fight over these plants without knowing the IDs and just basically want them by the way they look without having any kind of like, not bias, but you know, like, you guys know what I mean. We wanna just base it off of its looks and not like what the IDs are. I'm so excited. I really wanted Alice to come over today and unbox with me, but I get it, it was a long day. Oh, my Lanta, okay. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you guys the IDs of these plants because um, I, can't know what it is for the reason that I haven't filmed our collab yet, but oh my gosh, there's so many plants in here. Holy guacamole. Okay, so here's what, all of the tags are not facing outward. So I'm just gonna start opening it. Oh my gosh. There are so many in here. Oh, there's styrofoam peanuts. Ah, I don't like peanuts, I don't like styrofoam. Okay. I just wanted to open it because I told her I just want to make sure that they're okay and I want to make sure none of them need to like be watered or whatever. 
Oh my word. <gasps> Wait, I might accidentally see the ID though. I'm gonna try not to open them too much, I think. Okay, so this one is a dark velvety Ethereum. I'm feeling the substrate. It's actually quite wet, so I don't think any of these are gonna need to be watered. But I do wanna just like get it open so that they can breathe. Here is one of them. Oh, why isn't it? It's like so dark. Super, super dark. I don't even have like the slightest clue what this would be. I'm not gonna be good with Ethereum ID, so me even trying to guess is just like not very, it's just, it's just not gonna happen. Wowza, okay. It's so hard to like not look at the ID. Not like I'm tempted, but like I don't wanna accidentally see it. Oh my God, what is this? Some kind of Lux hybrid, I'm guessing. But wow, that color is beautiful. It's like dark green, but like an iridescent lime green almost with some blue. Yummy. I was gonna be torture not knowing who these are. Okay, this one, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who anyone is. Just dark, dark and velvety and shimmery and beautiful. Man, these arrived in great condition. So these are actually originally from, I think Woohoo Tropicals is in Florida. Why don't I know this? Oh my gosh, it's a strappy boy. My only guess is a one linger eye. But who knows? It feels it feels like a one linger eye in terms of like the texture and the thickness of it. Uh, the Wendley is like a bit thicker than the the Tarifolium, I'd say, especially as like um, a young plant, a juvenile plant. Yum. Looks like a little ice cream. <laughs> this is, oh my God, what is this? It's so yummy. Wait a second. Sorry, I just realized there's no, there's no ID on this. Sorry, I know she had like a, a method here, but I don't know if maybe it's in the, oh. Sorry, I'm just gonna like completely unbox one of these and just kind of see what's going on because I assumed that these had the IDs on them, but they don't. You know what? I bet you it's on the other side of this. It is. Okay, I saw a, I saw a couple letters. The IDs are on the back side of these Woohoo Tropicals um, tags. So actually I can open them all up, which is great. Thank you, Paulina, that's even better. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. Alice is gonna want this one. I feel like... This reminds me of something Carla. Doesn't it look Carla to you? OMG. Why does my new phone take like such crappy pictures sometimes? I'm sending this in the group chat as we... As I open them. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so that's cool. Now I can just like open them all up. That's great. I like these black tags. Oh, they're in Texas, not Florida, Texas. Sorry guys, I just assume all the cool growers are out in Florida. But there are cool growers in Texas too. I'm kind of, I'm so happy this shipment came in at the time it did because we've had like really nice weather the last week and I think temps are gonna drop pretty significantly. Ah, I can't tell, okay, that's the right side. Ooh, yummy. This one kind of looks like it could be maybe like a nigrolaminum hybrid or something. It's got like that really shiny leaf like a nigrolaminum GG and it, and it has even like the same color with the slight reddish um, sinus and, and petiole. Petiole? Yeah, petiole. I spy another Lux hybrid. I just love all the Lux hybrids going around, you guys. Keep them coming, man. Ooh, this one is like, this one's sultry. Holy guacamole. Oh man, that texture. That's, wow. It's it's a little, it's a little different than 
I feel like any of the Lux hybrids that I have, I don't have the slightest guess in what the other parent could be, but we love a good Lux hybrid. My goodness, I did not think they were gonna send this many plants. Seriously, that's, this is a lot. Oh yeah, yep, I like her, I like her. Don't know who she could be. She looks good. Maybe like some sort of pap hybrid. The leaf feels like a nigrolaminum GG, but I'm getting very like pappy, pappy vibes from this, I think. Really cute. Some kind of silvery anthurium. I see a red sinus really prominent sort of like midrib venation. I'm not good with Anthurium IDs. I bet you if Alice was opening this, she'd be like, oh yeah, I think this is a this and this and this. Whereas I'm like, I don't know, a Lux hybrid? <laughs> I can tell you when something's crossed with a Lux, that's for sure. Yumbo Jumbo, look at her. This one is very similar to, kind of, the texture is the same. I Like my guess is I would assume these have um, one of the same like parent plants. That's just my guess. But obviously we have another Lux hybrid here. Is it crazy how like Lux hybrids just exploded this year? So this one isn't as like pebbly as a Lux. So I'm guessing that maybe the Lux was the pollen parent. I could be wrong. Cause like, do you see like how much more pebbly this one is compared to this one? This one's like a little flatter. I have a feeling me and Alice are gonna fight till the death for this one, but there's a part of me that will want her to have it if there is Carla in it because Alice's kryptonite is Carla, and if there's one plant that she would love to have in her collection, even if it was a hybrid, it's gonna be that plant, and I would be too scared of killing it, so there's like a part of me that would selflessly maybe rig the game a little bit so that I lose on a round and then she can take that one. Interesting. Oh my gosh, this one is so cute. I have no clue what it is. Not the slightest clue. A pendant leaf, Anthurium. It feels like a Wenli. Oh my gosh, wait, actually, the leaves are so thick. I don't have the slightest clue what that is. What is this, you guys? Oh, my Lanta. Who is she? Look how shiny it is. That is crazy. I don't have the slightest clue. Holy guacamole. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven plants. Oh, twelve plants. I wish I could hold them all for you guys. Maybe I can. I don't want to drop it. No, I can't. I can't do it. There's way too many. There's way too many. But look at this goodness. This is insane. This is wild. I'm just, ugh, I'm floored. Floored. And there's soil everywhere, but I don't even care. Oh, here, now I can show you guys. This is wild. What a great way to end the day. I'm feeling very, very um, grateful. So thank you again, Paulina, Josh, and Brian. Um, I'm gonna link our videos in the description if you guys wanna watch it. I think mine is gonna be fairly short just because I don't have a ton of time to edit and there's gonna be, I think, six plants each in our videos, so it's not gonna be a long video. Like, both of ours are gonna be fairly short. Um, but I think it's gonna be good. Alice bought the harmonicas <laughs> and I was telling her we should just learn how to play the harmonica since we have them now and we can do like a little duet so that every time we collab we can do like a duet intro. Um, I'm gonna go, it's getting kind of late. It's not even nine o'clock yet, but I'm just, I'm filthy. I wanna take a shower, I wanna take my makeup off. Tomorrow we have a long day, so I think I want to start in one X. So I think I'm gonna start small and start styling this XO right here and maybe get the plant room a little bit 
cleaned because Alice is coming over tomorrow to film so I need to get everything done before the afternoon and if I have time tomorrow I'm also going to be um, prepping plants that I'm purging again so let me just show it to you guys while I'm here um, there's only a few anyway so in the quest of regaining my time I wanted to clear out some space in my um, red stuff because it was getting kind of crazy. So this is one that I pulled. I actually got this as a gift from Jing. I, I don't remember when I got this, but it's just growing so fast. I've trimmed this thing down so many times. I'm almost wondering if maybe I like hang on to it for a little bit and maybe give it to my mom so that she can grow it in her backyard because they're so cute. They look like little like knuckles. But I just find that I don't really have like a good spot for it and I feel like it just deserves more than what I'm giving it here. So that's that. Um, also this, <laughs> my Hoya um, Wilbur Graves, the reverted. So it's just basically like a splashy Carnosa. And um, this one, it made me happy for a little bit, but I think the more that I grow it, the more I realize that like when a leaf, a new leaf comes out, I'm not like, as excited as when a new undulata leaf comes out or a clemenciorum leaf comes out and it's kind of just like it grows and then it just grows so this is another one that i'm going to be selling this is originally from alice this is my hoya larissa and it's really cute but i just think in comparison to my other hoyas i just don't feel like this one is sparking as much joy as a Hoya should spark, so I think it's time to let go of that as well. Um, this one is, I think this is a Lapismium, and I really love these as mature plants, and I do see it starting to grow now, but it's just, <laughs> it's looking kind of crazy. I think my preference would be maybe if I could just find one that's a little bit more mature and like already trailing, I would be willing to put in the effort, but this right now, is doing nothing for me. I'm just gonna give this away as a freebie. This is something. I don't know who this is. I think I got this from um, Alice as well. And it's cute, but just not really doing, just not really doing it for me anymore. And then this is the last of my Hoya Viola. I actually sold some of them today in the live sale, or I think I gave it away as a freebie. It's pretty cool. Like it is very like reptilian and crusty, but I think it's just like compared to my other ones that are super 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 crusty I don't think that this is like really necessary so um, I'm going to be purging this as well and then I don't know who this is he's a cutie but he doesn't do anything and I just think that like someone who actually is good at growing cacti and astrophytum like that kind of species of plants I think that they could care for this thing a lot better than I can because it's done nothing and it's even starting to like kind of, I don't know. It's not soft or mushy or anything, but it's just, I don't know. It's not really doing anything. And then the last one is this. And I think I always knew this was coming. This is what's left of my Hoya Apache Clotta. I chopped this up a bunch in, in a video and I sold pretty much all of their cuttings today. And I was like, I'm just gonna leave like the bottom cutting. I don't really need a huge plant, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't quite bring me as much joy as it used to. I, I just think it's become a filler Hoya plant. And now that it's like growing and it's kind of getting like reestablished, I think this will be a good one to also sell, maybe as is. I might even sell it with the Architrellas, who knows. So I was able to clear out a good amount of space in here. And I do think I want to do something different down here because it's a little bit... I don't know it's a little weird um, but in general I just want to get my plant room looking cute again especially now that my office is in here and I'm spending so much time in this room I'm like I just want I just want it to look the way I want it to look I want it to be like like my little like sanctuary and oasis I feel like over the last few years I've kind of been like ripping at pieces here and there and um, trying to make my living room look really nice and so this has become sort of an afterthought so yeah it's time to get it looking cute again so that's what the focus of this week is gonna be hope you guys are here for it i don't know if you guys can tell but i'm struggling i'm losing my voice and um i need to save a little bit for <laughs> filming tomorrow so 
I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm so tired. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and I will see you in a bit. You guys, it has been a freaking day. A very unexpectedly magical day. So I forgot to mention to you guys yesterday that um, my merch was coming out today and I completely forgot. I shot out of bed this morning at like 8 a.m. And I remember I'm like, oh my god, it's Friday, merch comes out today, the website isn't ready, I have no descriptions ready, haven't double checked the prices, um, because I, just to be fully transparent, oh, sorry, Vince is in the bathroom, also I think my light is way too bright. Just to be fully transparent with you guys, I basically priced my merch the lowest I possibly could. Like, if I could just sell it, like, slightly above cost whatever their cost is i would but my manufacturer my supplier they have a minimum amount that i have to set it at for me i would much rather sell more than sell less and make more per sale if that makes sense like i just want it to feel more attainable and acquirable and i essentially wanted to price it at a price point that i would buy it at so i come across different like influencers sometimes where like i would love their merch but like I just can't justify the price of it. It'll be like a regular shirt and not even like a shirt that I like the fit of. And it has like the most simple design, like of the tiniest little thing. And it's like $65. I'm just like, why? Why is it like for a shirt? So I try to keep costs as low as possible. And I feel like you guys kind of got that because I had a goal set in my mind for um, how much I wanted to like sell today. and that number just completely got blown out of the water like it's comical and i'm just i've just been feeling so grateful today and just so like i don't know i feel like i'm dreaming i'm just like you guys really freaking showed up for me like i i just i can't thank you guys enough so it's been really um a good day in that way just feeling so much love i was feeling a bit insecure about this run because for one i haven't been feeling well the last i want to say almost month now i've been feeling very sick and i've been trying to just plow through filming as much as i can because i need to, <laughs> i need to pay my bills um and so i couldn't really invest the amount of time that i wanted to into making like a complete run so i was like you know what just for october and for this first run i'm gonna do what you guys have asked for which is tales of the thrift shirt and then one more style and so i do have quite a few styles available but um they're just kind of different renditions of the same designs if that makes sense but you guys you guys showed up today and i'm i was just telling alice like i don't even know what happened like i just my mind is blown so thank you guys so much um it really does mean so much to me you guys are seriously the best um so that was the first part of my day i was gonna start to try and film in the beginning of the day before alice got here but i figured if i exerted too much energy i might not have enough energy for this video that i filmed with her um i was gonna film some behind the scenes but we like were a bit on a time crunch so we just plowed through it but um instead of starting on this exo today which is what i was going to do i'm just gonna say let's table that for tomorrow i have my birthday lunch with alice and jing and their families tomorrow um and so maybe tomorrow night my husband has a fantasy draft i'll just spend the night with you guys and we can get this exo looking cute but for now i'm gonna show you what i got in this woohoo tropicals order so obviously you would have seen last night i unboxed them um, I didn't know any of the IDs, but now I do and I can show them to you because my video or our videos are going up before this one So if you haven't watched our collab video, there's kind of some spoilers, but um, you can go to Alice's uh, YouTube and see the ones she got she got some Amazing amazing plant. She finally got like her number one wishlist plant N not number one her number one wishlist plant is a Juan Carla but she got a Carla from woohoo tropicals and she was just blown away and i'm just so happy for her so anywho um this is one of the first ones that i got and this one is an ace of spades cross with the carla <laughs> like, what is this doing in my house like why are you here who who sent you here oh, i know who sent you here but like why why me i'm just i, I can't believe it so there's that one 
Um, this one here is a Bessier AF crossed with the Lux, and we were saying in that video how crazy it is that like the Bessier AF um, jeans really sort of overpowered this plant because I think if you guys know um, by now like seeing all the Lux crosses that are coming out, it's kind of hard to decipher each one of them because they're all so similar and that Lux, you know, belateness and that those Lux jeans really, really kind of overpower any other parent it has so we were just like impressed because if i looked at this i'd be like oh yeah that's a bessier i i like i do see lux in the like the older leaves but now that it's maturing i'm like where did the lux go where did she go i can see a little bit of pebbliness i don't know if you guys can tell it's a little pebbly but the bessier app does kind of they can have a pebbly texture so I'm really happy I got this one because I, I love the Bessie AF. I just haven't had much luck caring for it. I find it to be a little bit more finicky, more difficult. Um, so I'm hoping this one has hy hybrid vigor. I've been having pretty good luck with my Lux hybrid so far. So uh, fingers crossed for me on that one. Um, this one here is a Forgetty IX. Like I'll show you the tag. It's literally like Forgetty IX question mark. Sorry, it's going to be upside down. But um, if you guys know me, you know that I'm a sucker for Forgetti Eye. This, it's just really pretty. I thought this was like a red crystal hybrid. That was my first guess. I never would have guessed it was some kind of Forgetti Eye hybrid. But the mystery of it is very, very appealing to me. Um, I'm so curious to see how this thing is gonna grow out. And I'm excited. I am super excited for this one. Uh, the next one is such a cool one. Okay, so this one was so underrated. Remember I was telling you, I was like, I don't know what this is. Is it a baby Wenli? But they sent a Wenli in that package, and I'm like, I don't think that they would send two. That's just my guess. And so this is actually, I think this one I'm probably the most excited for, which is kind of crazy. So this one is an Anthurium SP Strappy Velvety, and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. And it is... <sighs> It's beautiful. It's like the love child of a Wenlingeri and a SP Morona. Or is it SP Morona or just Morona? I think it's SP Morona. It's like, I love the SP Morona, but I don't like that it's like a, it grows like a bird's nest. Is that the term I'm thinking of? Where it grows like upward rather than hang like a pendant. Um, so it has a very SP Morona leaf. It looks like it would have a thick leaf like the SP Morona, but sort of that... Velvine, velvetiness and the sheen of a Wenlingeri. Um, and I was, t I think I told you guys yesterday that this was quite thick. So um, I'm just getting very, very heavy Wenlingeri SP Morona vibes from it. And it's like smushing two beautiful, beautiful plants together. So I'm hoping that I can keep this one happy because both me and Alice are so stoked about these. And FYI, like even though we've divvied up the plants, basically any plants that we get in a package, whether it be from Amanda or whoever, it's like we kind of already know that like each other has dibs on like the first propagation of it. So, you know, obviously it's not just pressure for me to keep these alive because they were gifted to me, but also pressure to keep it alive because I want to give a piece to Alice at some point. Um, anyway, this next one, this is one that I really, really loved, and I'm glad that I won this one. So this is an Anthurium papillolaminum. Anthurium papillolaminum, uh, Woohoo One, crossed with a BVAP. Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really know what to say. We, um, well, Alice had thought that maybe this could be like a Dresslerai hybrid, and I kind of see it, like I see it in the Venetian here, but now that like I know what the hybrid is, I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, so happy to have that one. By the way, my stomach is like churning on itself. I barely ate anything today. Um, Vince just ordered McDonald's, and I'm just like waiting for it to get here, and the time it keeps getting pushed. It was like supposed to be here right now and then now it got pushed to 8.30. And I think I'm gonna wilt away. Okay, and then the last one that I got is so exciting because I actually knew what this plant was. And I can't remember where I would have 
seen it. I don't know if I saw it like on Instagram or on Facebook. I saw it somewhere and I was like, that is the craziest looking pap I've ever seen. So this is the Anthurium Pap 1, wait, Anthurium Pap Voldemort. Anthurium Papillolaminum Voldemort. And this is a self plant. And um, I'm gonna plug in what the Voldemort looks like. It is the craziest long ear, big lobe, leafed pappy I've ever seen. And I just think it's so cool, not even just for a plant to have, but like to use as like a breeding plant later. Like it would just be so cool to see different um, crosses with this, but I was like secretly hoping this would be in the package and it is and I, I didn't think it was this. I really, I had no idea that this would be it and um, I'm not really sure what I was expecting in terms of what the Voldemort would look like as a smaller plant, but um, I guess this is what it is. So yeah, holy, I'm just like, I'm just mentally unwell today. I feel like I have received so many blessings that I don't deserve, um, but I'm grateful for it. And I'm just like, wow, what the heck? And I'm sorry for anyone who hates this shirt. You've got like Pennywise's eyeball just glaring at you. And it's so funny because in my camera, like I have a little tracker where it tracks like where the faces are. It keeps wanting to track Pennywise's face. Um, but I really only wear this shirt during the month of October to make it feel more special. I got this for my sister, so I try and wear it as often as possible. But anywho, um, like I said, instead of working on this EXO today, I think I'm just going to get these unpotted just to see like what we're working with here. They're already in soil, so I think what I'm going to do is use their soil that they have but mix it with tree fern fiber. And I'm going to do like a tree fern fiber soil mix and maybe mix a little bit more perlite into it. I'm not 100% sure yet, but let me um, just mix a batch of soil really quick and I'll be right back. I'm sorry if this is the worst angle, you guys. I've been so lazy. I've been so lazy to get my setup in here and I'm like almost wondering if I just get like a per not a permanent, but get an actual like mini table because I much prefer um, Repotting on the ground. I'm gonna be making new tags for them as well. So I'm just gonna unpot everything. Um, can you guys see? I'll try and go a little bit closer. My butt is hurting from the floor though. So this one doesn't have a whole lot of roots, but still enough to work with. More than enough to work with. It's so cute. It's just like a little tiny bush. Um, okay, so we've got that guy. All right, we've got two yellowing leaves down here. It's so teeny tiny. That's pretty much expected. Let's see what the root system sitch is. I can see, um, it looks like it was started in like a sphagnum moss plug which is quite interesting. I kind of like that idea. Instead of using like an actual plug, just like doing a little ball of sphagnum. Unless they, they just use this for shipping, but it kind of looks like it's like in there pretty good. So yeah, it kind of seems like it was started in spag. Spag? Spag? Every time I refresh my merch site, I get new orders in and it's, it's one of those feelings that like, I'm like, oh yeah, only, you know, like big influencers like experience things like that. But you guys are really out here making me like live a fantasy world. Like what is happening? I will be, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm gonna be um, designing more styles that are not like spooky Halloween theme. And I will be offering kids styles as well, so. Stay tuned for that. Um, we have some really nice roots on the Forgetti IX. Very, very happy with that. We have Sir Voldemort here. And you know what is just the biggest treat? That after such a great day, I get to have McDonald's. I know that some people think McDonald's is gross, but I grew up on McDonald's basically. And it just feels like home for me. And I'm so glad that McDonald's here tastes pretty much the same as the one in America 
Taco Bell is a different story. I wish I could do like a whole expose <laughs> on the one Taco Bell here in my area. It's just, it's one of those Taco Bells that's connected to a KFC first red flag. And it's like every time you order from that Taco Bell, they for one don't give you enough food. So you have a taco, right? If you order a taco, you know, it's supposed to be filled up the whole taco. They fill it up like halfway. Like there's so much empty shell at the top. They just don't put enough ingredients ever. If you get like their nachos, they'll do like a tiny little squirt of nacho cheese, like the, maybe like three beans and then like a little thing of sour cream and it's just all chips. And I'm like, it's terrible. Everything arrives soggy. Everything is cold. I'm just like, so when I go to the States, I just... I go crazy on the Taco Bell because it is nothing like what we have here. Sometimes I wish I could just like go in there and just make the food myself. I'm like, listen, just let me do it. If you really don't like to make it, if you don't have passion for your work, <laughs> let me do it. Because let me tell you, if I was working at Taco Bell, I would put my heart and soul into it. I really would. Anyway, Voldemort looking good. We have some nice juicy roots here too. Oh, okay. Best day off Lux. Pudge is gonna be so tired tonight. I swear to you guys, he does not freak out with anyone else the way he freaks out for Alice. Like, not for my family, my parents, other, like, we had friends that came here with two of their dogs. He was chill, just didn't, he was like way calm. Whenever Alice is here, it's like Christmas for him. He does not calm down. He is unwell. He's just jumping all over her, just wants to kiss her and be on her. It's the cutest thing ever. He is obsessed with that woman. Roots look good. I'm impressed, you guys. I am very, very, very impressed. AOS Carla. So I'm looking at their soil mix and it's very dense. I don't know if this is the soil mix that they grow in normally, um, but again, you know, they're growers over in Texas, not the same climate here. Um, it's very similar to the soil that you would see at pretty much any nursery. It's just a mixture of soil and um, some fine perlite, lots of perlite mixed into it, even though it doesn't really look like it because it's not coarse. There is actually quite a bit of perlite mixed into here. So I do think, yeah, it's going to be fine mixing this in with tree fern fiber. I actually think that it's going to be, I think it'll take to it really well. I was actually even thinking of adding some bark, but because the roots are so tiny, I don't think that's really necessary. That substrate might be a little bit too large for it. One last one. At least I have something to distract me from my hunger. My next, I think the next time Woohoo, I mean, I guess it just depends on the price, but I think the next time Woohoo has a circus peanuts in stock, I think I'm gonna have to like try and convince some friends to go in on a plant with me to split. I'm talking to you, Lauren. That's basically who I'm talking to. I'm not like, I don't have a lot of Anthurium on my wish list, and I, I think by now you guys know I'm not like a crazy Anthurium girly, although my collection would say otherwise. I think I'm always like gonna be a philodendron girl at heart, but the Circus Peanuts just has something, it just does something to me, and I love that the inflow smells like peanuts. Like, I wanna smell one myself. I will try hard to not taste it, although I can't make any promises. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna pick out some of these roots that have fallen off. There's like polyfill in here a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. And then I'm gonna mix it with this concoction, which like I said, tree fern fiber and perlite. And then I'm gonna add some of this soil. I don't actually know these, um, the vessels that I'm putting this in, but I do think for these ones, I'm gonna just go straight to doing drainage holes. I really, in my heart, like I, I wish that I was just growing Anthurium with no drainage. And maybe I'll get back to that point later down the line when I'm like more confident with Anthurium. But right now, I feel like the best route for me is to go drainage holes. 
Oh, let me pop in. Let me pop in a photo of what the fake fern looks like in my bathroom. You guys, it's a vibe. I don't know, like, I'm not here to like push fake plants on you guys. I think a lot of you would be repulsed by, by that idea, but I'm just saying, I feel like there are certain circumstances and areas in the house where you can get away with a fake plant. Especially if it's like a fake succulent or something. Like, I really don't mind those. Like, when I see them at people's houses, I don't immediately like, ugh, a fake plant. Like, oh, You know? Like, sometimes if it just, like, works, it works. Especially if it's, like, a windowless bathroom. You know? It's like, sometimes that's just the route. The, the route. Wow. I'm so Canadian. Sometimes that's just the route you have to go. And in my windowless bathroom, I have been aching for plants in there, but I'm like, do I really want to get a grow light in there? Not really. So that just like really um, scratches that itch for me. And I think it looks really good. All right, not my, not my ideal vessels. I don't love these because these ones specifically, I stopped using these a long time ago because when they get like the roots get trapped in these slits, it's game over. There's no saving them unless you cut the pot. Um, these ones I don't mind as much because the drainage holes are so small that like it's hard for anything to like push out of there unless they're like micro micro roots. And in that case, like I don't even mind just like yanking it off. So these are fine. And then I've got this one, which I think I got this from Amanda. She shipped a plant to me in it once, maybe. And I've got these tiny, cutie little square pots from Lauren. These are the cutest pots I've ever seen in my life. No cap. So since this is, I think, the smallest vessel, I think I need to put the one with the tiniest root system in it, which I believe is going to be this little guy. O-M-G. So cute. Um, so I'm not going to be sprinkling any myco onto these roots. I'm actually just going to get it into its cash pot and um, inoculate it with... I think I'll, I'll do great white for these guys. Anyway, birthday thoughts. I'm turning 34 and um, I'm a little bit in disbelief because I just like can vividly remember being... I think I was like 13 years old. I probably already told this story to you guys, but I can remember being like 13 years old and thinking, oh my gosh, 30 is never gonna come. That's so far away. Like, I'm just gonna, like, it's just never gonna come. And now I'm here turning 34 and I'm just like, what? <laughs> What's happened? What's happened in the last few years? Can someone tell me? Cause it's all a little bit of a blur. I feel something in my eyelashes. But you know, Usually, like, I would say over the last few years, I've sort of felt a little bit, like, down on my birthday and just a little bit, like, panicky almost because I think every year before this year, I've always had this overwhelming sense of, like, oh, why? <laughs> my eyes. My eyes. My eyes. I can see something, like, stuck in my lashes. And I don't know if it's on the left side or the right side. Maybe it's like polyfill or something. I've had this overwhelming sense of just like panic because I think when I hit my 30s, I kind of felt this pressure to like know what I was going to do with my life like indefinitely. And I feel like I don't have a proper like retirement fund and 401k and all of this and that because you know I was I've been self-employed for a long time and when you're self-employed you don't you don't get stuff like that I'm gonna lose it I see something I see something you guys didn't even tell me I had something in my eyebrow I thought we were friends um I did have something in my eyelash and it was like one of the thinniest thinniest thinnest tiniest pieces of pudges fur um, so I'm okay now. I'm not gonna have a mental breakdown <laughs> um, But yeah, I would have a mental breakdown before in prior years feeling like I just Had no sense of what I was doing with my life and I felt like all of my peers and everyone around me Just had like such a solid plan. They had something to fall back on They just like knew what they wanted to do and knew what they wanted to be and I think in a lot of cases that's like really nice to have 
you know, like people like Vince, there are people like Vince out there and there's no problem with this. People who love the stability, love the nine to five. They like go through college and they just like know what they want to do and then they do it and they're really good at it. I have a lot of those people in my life and I'm so proud of them and I'm so happy for them because I think everybody kind of like finds their way in life the best they know how. You know, I really hate, I hate something that I just, makes me cringe is when i hear like entrepreneurs and people who are self-employed who are just like you know stop like stop slaving over your nine to five and like do something that's meaningful and do something for you like and this is coming from someone who like doesn't do the nine to five thing i just think it's so weird that there's this like stigma around the nine to five that makes you like Oh, that means that you're not like hard working enough because you didn't do something that's your own or it means that you're just like a sheep or like you're just like part of a site like a part of a system or whatever but it's like if you guys think about like all the people who work nine to fives like that's what makes the freaking world go round you know what i mean doctors they're not even working nine to five they're working like nine to twelve <laughs> like their hours are crazy um people who do gar like to take care of the garbage and the recycling like all these little things that are like luxuries in your life it's like there are people behind these systems right and these processes and if those people weren't around it's like what would happen so in a way we all kind of like find our place and um i think that's also to say that like just because someone has found their place and they're happy and maybe you don't have that like I don't think that you should panic and I, I, I think that maybe that's like a product of what was ingrained to us from the generation before. I know that it was certainly something that was ingrained to me and it's something that's still kind of being, well maybe not so much anymore because I think some of them can finally see that like I'm okay and I'm gonna be okay but you know it was like the constant like when are you gonna go back to school like when are you gonna get your degree because once whatever you're doing now like whatever self-employed thing you have going whenever that's done or whenever it fails um you need something to fall back on and like nobody can take your degree from you but i think just like how nobody can take your credentials and your degree from you nobody also can take your experience from you and your skills and i truly believe that and i think that's something that i have to keep reminding myself that like if for whatever reason my business fails i'm not doing this like youtube thing or plant thing anymore i think that i have to just remember that i have i have skills like i i have something to fall back on it's not like just because i don't have a degree i'm screwed i'm never gonna find any work like I think it's just reminding myself of your worth in different ways that weren't so traditional. So that's something that I'm like constantly trying to remind myself because every birthday I'm just like, all right, let's look at your life. <laughs> and sometimes I don't like what I see when I'm like, you know, kind of taking a step back and seeing how much I've accomplished and like my goals that I've met or haven't met and stuff. So I try to not I, I do think it's good to have goals. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I, I also don't think that you should be so like stuck on it either. I think that like if you are, I feel like you you miss out on a lot of the really, really special and like cool things in life because you're so worried about this list that you want to accomplish. You know what I mean? Same thing that goes for like the timeline of like your life. I certainly had a timeline. I'm like, I want to have a degree by this age. I want to have a paid off car by this age, my own house by this age, an adopted kid by this age. I never wanted to get married. So that was never in my, in my timeline. Um, and all of that changed and I'm married now. And like, you know, previous me, if she heard that I got married, she would be mortified she would be mortified. So safe to say my whole timeline changed, my whole life plans changed, nothing went to plan, nothing has gone on its timeline, but I'm fine, like, you know? And so I think when you obsess over these things, it just like, yeah, it can be, it can be kind of crippling and um, anxiety inducing for sure. 
Oh my gosh, my McDonald's is almost here, so I have to hurry. I have to hurry. Hopefully these can fit. I feel like this is a little small, but might be okay. I might need to do like a pretty quick repot with these because the the root system is a little bit bigger than I anticipated for these pots, but the next pot size I have up is like quite large. So maybe once these root for a few weeks, I'll move it maybe to a cup and I'll just cut some holes in it. But anyway, all that to say, this birthday, I'm actually feeling good. I, I feel like this is the first birthday where I haven't dwelled on like things that I haven't accomplished um, and things that I had on my to-do list. Like, and I think one of those nagging things, and I'm sure you guys know, is like just like owning property, owning a house. I don't know why it's it's just so important to me. And it's something that I really want and I've explained why it's not even just so like oh yeah like you know building your equity and building your person you know your your assets and having something to hand down if I ever have kids like that's not that's not where the anxiety lays for me it's just like I love being home I love being in my space and I feel like I've never been able to make something completely my own because I'm always living under someone else's roof and so it's just a bucket list thing for me to just have property and just like do whatever i want to it and make it mine and like you know and have a forever home like i would love to have like a forever home something that i'm really proud of and i'm like yeah this is where i want to spend my last dying day um and if I'm not, if I'm super old by the time I own my first property, like I'll never have my, my dream home. So right now the goal is like, if we can even afford a townhouse, that's where we want to start. There's no way that we can afford detached property unless we like won the lottery and I don't play the lottery. So that's not going to happen. And so, yeah, that's just one of those nagging things. Every birthday I'm like, oh, just... Another birthday, still renting. Savings is still not big enough to put down a down payment. It is what it is, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm not like, yeah, I guess this is the first year that I've been just kind of okay where I am. Not to say that I'm not still like constantly thinking about home ownership. It's something I'm working towards, but I think I'm learning to stop i'm learning to stop obsessing i'm learning to stop obsessing over it like it's the only thing i'm living for that's what i'm trying to say and i'm not letting it ruin my birthday i am very blessed i have great friends great family great job good health i hope I think I have good health. And our food's here. That's our sign, folks. Uh, Pudge can smell it outside the front door and he goes freaking crazy. So anyway, <laughs> he's going nuts. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go. Um, everything has been potted. I'm just gonna get it inoculated off camera. Stick these into my Anthurium cabinet, which is my Millsville wide now gonna make some tags for them and that's gonna be it so tomorrow we will pick back up um, right in the plant room again we're gonna head straight into this exo and hopefully getting it looking a little bit better than it looks now I was just about to turn off all the lights in here when I <laughs> noticed this thing so you will see that I put all the copper um, spickle mites into this dome and what I'm gonna do is put it in here for a couple days so that it gets nice and toasty and hopefully that will wake up a lot of them and then once they're like more awake then I'll start dispersing them onto plants just to like give it a higher chance do I see some already oh you won't be able to see it I feel like I can see some crawling around in there already what the hecky becky anyway so yeah this is gonna go in my tent for I'm gonna say like two or three days and then I'll start um, moving them around. I can see it moving. I think one is alive. <gasps> it's alive! You guys can't see it. There's a little mite right here and it's just moving around. Um, okay, so some of them are alive already, so that's great. 
Um, I'm gonna just, yeah, maybe one or two days, stick it in the tent, and then we'll disperse it on Sunday or Monday. Hey guys, happy Monday. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm sitting on the floor next to my trash can in the kitchen and that's because it is a very dark and stormy day which is kind of magical but really bad for filming and I feel like we uh, sorry killed a gnat um, I feel like we've been in the plant room so often and I just needed a little bit of change of scenery for my sanity while I'm editing this and also this is the best place where I can get natural light because uh, it was my birthday weekend. Um, the reason I didn't film over the weekend like I said I was was because I just decided to take the weekend off for my birthday. Birthday weekend went really well. Um, on Saturday, I had lunch at one of my favorite restaurants with Jing and her family and then Alice and her boyfriend. And um, they, they just freaking spoiled me. So they put together like this whole huge gift goodie bag with so many like cute things but they have been keeping a secret for very long and if you watched Alice's video that went up earlier this month um you would have seen how she conspired with Lauren and Amanda to get certain plants to me and it was a whole thing I'm not going to go into detail about how she did it I will just link that video in the description so I'm just like kind of blown away because when these plants came in I was just like where have these been hiding how did they get here how did Amanda even know it was my birthday like I just I had so many questions so I'm just going to show you the two plants that they got me and I'm still like I've just been in shock all weekend so the first one is a Forgetti Eye uh, Carla and this one, both of these are from Amanda's collection. This is not Amanda's hybrid, she just had this in her collection, it's one of one. I don't think she's ever um, propagated this or sold any of it. I think this was the only one she ever had to my knowledge and it is freaking beautiful. Like it's got that Forgetti Eye-ish sinus and then like the venation just kind of drops off right here and doesn't go all the way to the leaf uh, the leaf margin like a Carla. I was shocked when I saw a mature photo of this plant which I will plug in right here. Like there, I have no business whatsoever having a plant like this in my collection. I really don't you guys. Like there, I don't know why this is here. I am grateful for it, but I'm just so confused. Uh, you guys might know that I just love, I love Forgetti Eye. It's one of my favorite Anthurium. I would say probably top three. And so anything crossed with Forgetti Eye, I will take. I don't care how common it is. Forgetti Eye Mag, Forgetti Eye Crystal, Forgetti Eye whatever is the most common these days, Crystal Mag. And so to have a Forgetti Eye Carla is just, what, why? Amanda also threw in this little rubber ducky, which is so cute. It's actually like really good quality. It kind of feels like vintage weight. I don't know if you guys know what I mean. Like um, if you guys look at like vintage toys and vintage trinkets, all of them are like, like metal and then just, they're just like really well built. <laughs> and so this ducky has some weight to it and it's so cute. And you know, Amanda just knows me so well and she just like knows that I love my little bits and bobs and my plants. So. This is the first one and I'm just still so like, I'm in shock. The next one <laughs> had me floored even more. The next one is my very own Carla Bevep train. Not now, we're having a moment. I would say that this is one of my favorite plants that have ever come from Amanda. Lauren has one, Alice has one, any time, Anytime Amanda posts photos of this plant or shows photos of this plant, I'm just like, what I would give. I have been secretly waiting for the day that like Alice or Lauren are ready to cut their plants so I can just like insert myself in the queue, you know? Because this plant just gets me. It's that booty hole sinus. It's like protruded like a booty hole and it's pink. It's got like the pink venation to it. It has the most beautiful leaf color and it's like the most simple venation but it's just everything like there's nothing I don't like about this plant um, every time I see it at the shop I just I have to look at it I have to touch it and I just have to oogle at it and I just can't believe that I have one in my house now like this is madness this is insane 
Um, and of course, she threw in another little bits and bob, which is this the cutest mushroom I have ever seen in my life. There's a part of me that like wouldn't even be surprised if she made this because there's something you have to know about Amanda. She is extremely creative, like does she just like does it all and if she wants something she just learns how to do it and she's very resourceful and she's very intelligent and so i don't know i just wouldn't put it past her to have made this herself but it's it's so cute and it's gonna stay with this plant for all of eternity but i don't know i don't know why these are in my house i just don't know why <laughs> why god why but i'm so grateful i I don't know. I just feel like so lucky with, to be blessed with like the best friends ever and um yeah, I'm just feeling all the things. So, yesterday for my birthday, um I decided to spend it by watching scary movies. So, uh I put on a spooky movie. I just kind of plopped down in front of my anthurium cabinet and I rearranged all of my anthurium so that I could fit these two in there. Obviously the goal is going to be to have them living outside of the cabinet, but for now I want to just kind of get it comfy. I think I'm going to wait to see some new roots, maybe wait to see a new leaf on each of them, and then once they put out a new leaf, I will acclimatize it out. I know that right now, at this time of year, it's not the best time to be acclimatizing, so um, I'm going to be just keeping an eye on it. If I feel like it starts to go downhill after it comes out of the cabinet, I'll just shove it back in, but that's kind of where we're at right now with that. And maybe I'll just take you over to the Ethereum cabinet and show you what I've done in there, but I want to show you something else. So this is um, one of my birthday gifts from uh, Vince, and he had this shirt made, and it is just like the coolest, cutest thing ever. I feel like I'm going to live in this. So it says Pudgy Boo, and it's all of his. <laughs> he thinks I'm calling him. Um, it has all of his his costumes when he was a bat When he was a demogorgon and that's it's so funny because this wasn't even a costume like and I never would have like looked at this photo and been like Oh, yeah, that can totally pass as being a costume But this was um, when we went to California and Millie got like a doctor's kit for her birthday and so basically for the rest of that trip she was just like attached to the hip to that kit and she was doing little checkups on all of us and Pudge was uh, also a victim to it so she actually like put on his whole bat or put on her badge and like the stethoscope so I'm just obsessed with this shirt it's so freaking cool I love it so much this train is going to send me into the depths of oblivion I'm feeling a rage I know that it's like like they have to like I know that they have to like honk their horns and there's like laws and stuff like that but like why you see the train don't don't pass there's a train there so anywho um let's go over to the oh uh let's go over to the anthurium cabinet and i will just kind of show you how i rearrange things in there okay so we are here at the anthurium cabinet and I haven't really done many changes to it since moving it from the plant room. I still have my two lights up here. So I have a 24 watt Monios and a 10 watt Barina up here. And then yesterday, Pudge, are you okay? Yesterday I added this Barina down here just so some of these bottom ones could get some light. So I'm just gonna quickly kind of just like take you and show you who's in here. So we've got in the corner uh, the Anthuria Woohoo's First Night. I have my RA5 self here, which ugh, did not wanna do that. It was like pushing up against my Ace of Spades, but this is a new leaf and it's still expanding and still getting bigger. So I may need to elevate it a bit cause it's getting a bit too close to the bottom of the shelf but like how good is this leaf it's so nice and i'm gonna knock on wood it's so nice to finally have some emergent leaves where like spider mites haven't taken over and they just look normal like they look fine so like i said um ace of spades in the corner here i have my lux ralph line on fort sherman i wanted to repot this in this week of but i feel like it's still not completely like hardened off yet so i don't really want to touch it and then right here i have my gerald bess i have a red crystal here that like 
the new leaf just never like expanded and never got bigger so i do think i want to get it out of here this was supposed to just be to like rehab it um and i actually think it's doing more bad than good because there's too much moss in there so gonna get that out of here i have one of my favorite anthurium back here which is the tofu forgetii this is the mag crystal from amanda which i keep saying like to me, it looks like it could be something else, but we're calling it a Mad Chris. My new Doriaki Red Crystal here. I have a Woohoo One BVEP. This one is my um, Vag Lux. So it's a Crystal Mag crossed with a Forgetty Eye Lux. That one's from Lauren. So here in the corner, I have my Ethereum Diablo Wens, which is also from Amanda, and it's pushing out its first leaf since I've gotten it, it's so fun. This one is my, uh, whatchamacallit, my Pap Voldemort. Wenli from Alice, which this new leaf just finished sort of hardening off and I'm so happy to finally be seeing some size on it. Down here in the corner, I have my Subsignatum Portili or Portier. Um, this one is my Pap Port. This one is still hardening off. It's weird because it has little like spots on it, like it has spider mites, but I don't see any at all. So kind of confused about that. This one is my Maglux. This one like hates me. I've always struggled with this one. It finally just pushed out a new leaf after having it for like a year or even longer than that. So I don't know what's up with that one. This is my baby Lux, which is kind of dormant right now. Hasn't really done anything since it pushed out this one leaf. That one back there is a cross from Lauren. So that one's an Anthurium Mag crossed with a Nigro Laminum GG, or maybe it's a Nigro Mag. E no, it's a Mag Nigro. And then this one is, I think I repotted this on camera. Yes, in a recent video. So this is my Anthurium Crystallinum Silver Special, which was not doing well. So I repotted it and I separated the other one. Not really seeing any new roots just yet. But it look, kind of looks new. Sorry, I'm using my iPhone, so like the focusing or like, yeah, the focusing isn't that great. Down here, I've got the AOS Carla from Woohoo. And then this is an AOS green form cross with a mag. And this one was, um, this was a cross from Lauren. Um, this one is my Ethereum Carib Queen. Had a bit of damage from previous spider mites, but she's spider mite free now. This one is my Bessier F uh, Lux from Woohoo. This is a Subsignatum Pap. Oh, so this is the same thing. So this is a sub Subsignatum Pap. This is the smaller version of it. So the reason that Amanda even sent us another one was because <laughs> these ones just were so awful. Like they're just not doing anything. I do have a new leaf down here, but it's, it's just, it's not doing well. Got the Forgetty Eye X from Woohoo. This one is my um, Zara Michelle from Anna. My one I'm very excited about, the SP Strappy Velvety from Woohoo. This one is, I think this is a Philodendron Obtusifolium or something, and a fungus not just grew out of it. This is my Path Wonder Boy, which it hasn't been doing that great. I do see some new roots in there, but it's just not doing well. And then also this guy. So Oh my god, the fungus gnats. So this is my PAP5 self, and I do have it in drainage holes. It got, it has really nice roots, but like the leaves are just so unhappy. I think I saw it pushing out. Oh, maybe it, I was thinking of another plant. I thought it was pushing out a new growth plant, but I guess not. I'm probably just going to chop off both of these leaves and let it figure itself out because I don't like looking at it. But anywho, that is the Anthurium cabinet. My goal is to eventually get these all out of here because I don't really like growing Anthurium in cabinets anymore because I tend to get more fungal spots and things like that. But since this is a like low humidity greenhouse and it's more so like warm, I'm not super worried, but I still prefer to grow it outdoors. While we're here, sorry you guys, the lighting is so bad. Like I'm not joking. It is such a yucky day outside. Yucky, but nice. I don't know, I like it. Um, but just not great for filming. So anywho, I want to show you my Pally. So this is the um, this is the one that I got from the last pop-up or maybe two pop-ups ago, Tropicals Plants at Lauren's place. And I was telling you guys how the specific batch of Pallies that they put out recently are just so narrow. Like look how thin it is. 
they're all so thin like no matter how much it's been growing it just stays so thin compared to my other pally which has like wider leaves this one's so cute it's been growing really well um i just took it out of the greenhouse this weekend so i'm hoping it does okay um what else do we have going on here oh my hybrid seedling this is probably one of my favorites that came out of my batch so this is a crystal mag forgetti eye dark forgetti eye and i feel like it looks so much different than the other ones that came out of that batch which are right here i don't know like this one looks more like silvery and i don't know it just looks different like this one's so dark and like the venation is so neon like even on the older leaves like it just to me it does not look does not look like the same plant if you ever bought a michelle a michelle if you ever bought an anthurium brielle from me from one of lauren's purges this is the mother plant and it is so gorgina like it looks very similar to like the crystal hope but not quite and i find under the right light which is lower light this is only 10 watts um, you get some really, really dark leaves. And I find that it's a little bit more elongated unless that's gonna change, but that's what it looks like right now. My Anthurium VTI Super Narrow has been out of a greenhouse for about, I wanna say it's been like a month now. Um, and it's done fine, no yellowing, no nothing. And so far, so good. I also just moved this guy out of the greenhouse. This is my Crystal Black. So also, um, what I did over the weekend as well is uh, extended the pole on my Glorious and I will throw in a photo of what my newest Glorious leaf looks like. I didn't actually get to appreciate it until this weekend because it's always so high up, but it's so cute. I love it so much. Down here are like not really Anthurium, like I have some Anthurium down here, my very sad King of Spades. I have my forgetti eye which is flowering but i kind of have just like my miscellaneous plants here that i still love very much but like they don't really have a place and i don't have enough anthurium at the moment to fill up these shelves so they're kind of just living here and they're happy my fern is alive still for anyone wondering it's doing really really well um speaking of ferns here is my maiden hair fern I also trimmed it back yesterday. It was growing out of control and it just took up the entire um, tank. So I trimmed it back by a lot. So it's looking a little bit more tame now. I should have chopped this off. This looks a little bit sad, but it's doing okay. Taking a moment to appreciate my Dean McDowell, which has like grown out of control. There are two new leaves incoming and it's just so bushy. So if you guys needed a sign to combine your Dean McDowell's, if you have two separate plants, I say put them together because it is definitely a party when they're in the same pot. And then behind it, I have moved my little <laughs> gnat trap. So I've just been moving this one guy around to different rooms. And while I was rejigging things around here, I just realized how many gnats were in my plants up here in my soil plants. And so I just figured I would move it to there and hopefully I can catch some of them. This is the current state of my office. It's pretty bad. I don't know how it got so messy. Actually, I do know how it got messy, but it was avoidable. I just decided to be lazy this weekend. So before we move into here and start working on that EXO, I'm just gonna get cleaned up. I was gonna film it, but you know what? I would rather not. I'm just gonna clean it really quick and then we will um, sit down and start working on a grid. I think before I get started on the grid wall, um, in this exo, I'm going to water first because I was gonna water in here yesterday, but I ran out of steam and I just I can see things that are very thirsty. So I want to acknowledge that. So maybe we'll do like a water and repot. What? A water and chat instead of a repot and chat. I actually also need to um, spider mite treat because oh I should see how my mites are doing. Oh my gosh, you guys, they are awake, awake. I don't know if you're, oh, you can see them. They're everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna water and then I'll start dispersing some around here because I don't want them to starve. I mean, they can eat the bran, but I want them to eat spider mites. My Amanda hybrid is um, on the mend from having a really, really bad case of spider mites. I don't see any. Uh, I just lied. There's some on the back. I don't know if they're dead though because I did treat this 
so I don't know if these are just like residual but today I am watering with seriously that was my grandpa texting me um today I'm watering with a mixture of CalMag and soil enhancer from TPS which has beneficial bacteria in there to kind of get things refreshed I still need to repot this so bad because this dries out so freaking fast. I'm so happy my mites have hatched. I um, definitely want to target the top shelf in my uh, living room. I did a full spider mite inspection yesterday. Didn't find a single plant with spider mites. It's just... Sorry, I'm just doing everything for precaution but yeah it's just crazy how well the dr woods spray or the dr woods tea tree and um, peppermint castile soap mixed with 99 percent isopropyl alcohol has worked like it's madness how well how well it's done so i think i'm gonna do one more no i'm not gonna do one more to me i was gonna if my mites hadn't hatched as much as it did i would have chucked all of these into the shower to do one more spider mite treatment but i would rather the mites have these mites the good mites have a little treat watch me check these plants and none of them have spider mites <laughs> part of me wants to see some so that my little guys have something to to snack on i know my scalp room has to have some like every time i've checked my scalp room in the last few weeks it's had spider mites no matter how many times i've um sprayed it summer glory recently repotted on camera i can see signs of new life down here which is great hasn't skipped a beat didn't yellow at all didn't really throw any kind of tantrum after being repotted so happy about that people have been basically asking me whether i've been missing the plants that I've gotten rid of and sold and honestly I can't even think of one plant right now that like I have thought of in the last few weeks where I'm like I miss it I thought I'd feel that way about my Mexicanum but I'm I'm good you guys like I feel good I, I definitely feel like less is more just having quality plants in your collection like plants that you know you want to invest the time in I feel like that's where it's at for me right now. Oh my gosh, look at the little baby. <laughs> I didn't even know he was there. Oh, my Lanta. There's probably more corms in here that want to come to life, but I am not digging this thing up. Oh good, I see some spider mites on here. That's great. You know what, while I'm watering, I might as well just like, no, I was gonna say I'd hang packets while I'm watering but I want to kind of disperse them evenly so let's not do that um this guy is on the shrug he's struggling but this is my original mellow and I do have a backup now so I'm not super super worried there's a chance I may even just chuck this to the wind and um just say forget it because i have a whole bunch of mellow propping in my um in my tent as well no i know you have spider mites i know you do don't lie to me this one is just like infested with mites you know what i'm gonna get i'm gonna get one packet onto here right away oh man this thing is crawling with beneficials just because i know this one is gonna be one that i want to oh one that I definitely want to have a packet of mites. So I think I might actually put, do I want to put two? I might put two on this guy just cause. So I usually hang it by the petiole. I like it to be more like this, like touching the actual leaf. Ideally I'd want it here. Maybe I'll just bend him a little bit. There we go. So that's going to be how I'm going to hang these two. And luckily now they'll have something to eat. I bet you the ones on the scalp room are going to be big and fat and juicy in no time. I love seeing mites get slightly bigger. 
There are even mites out there where they turn like a different color once they eat once they eat something, which is really cool. Cool and, and satisfying. So these are kind of the last of my Hoyas that I have to sell. Some of them are just gonna be straight giveaways. I like to include some freebies in Lauren's um, live sales because she's like super generous and she's always like throwing in freebies. So since she's letting like me get into her lives and le letting me sell, I figure I should contribute to the freebies as well. These things are drying out like hotcakes and moss. Also, I'm sorry for the extra freaking vocal fry. <laughs> someone, someone left me a comment like a year ago saying that like they like my videos but they can't listen to me because of my voice. And um, I didn't, I didn't even really actually know what a vocal fry was until recently when I was on TikTok, and I was like, oh, is that a thing that people get annoyed of? Because I've talked like that my whole life, and apparently it's like a pick me main character energy type girl that talks like that and it's supposed to be like intentional but i don't know I, i've always talked like this i swear um but i'm extra raspy right now because i was filming like crazy last week this weekend i was doing a lot of talking too so my voice is just spent i think i can fit some of my extra props in here so this is another one I'm gonna sell. I don't even know why I propagated this, to be honest. I think this is, I think it's a glorious or a gloriosum. I can't tell, but that is also gonna be probably another freebie. I have my beautiful majestic here from Amanda, which I can't wait to grow. It's got obviously a new leaf coming in. I'm probably gonna chop off this leaf, but yeah this one's just so i love this i love that one this plant has not done anything for me in the last jing when did you give this to me you gave this to me like a freaking year and a half ago or something like i've had this plant for so long and it's done nothing but i love it because look at the variegation i'd love to see like i'd love to see what i can grow from it but it's just forever dormant it's stuck in time forever I don't know what to do and then this one um krista if you're watching i still have your summer glory here i don't know if you still want it but it's getting pretty big it's look i think it's gonna need not a repot but i do think it probably needs a change of soil and then the last one oh look a new leaf this is my leader red that i inherited from alice my ability to grow this plant is like it's awful but i really really enjoy this this plant a lot and so i just keep trying i just keep trying and trying and trying even though i am consistently failing but i'm gonna give it one more shot i also have these plants i'd like to get tucked away i do have to repot these because i want to take some of my vessels back maybe we'll do that this week if we have a chance but i really was only planning to film until tomorrow for this week of i didn't want this to be like a three hour long week of if not maybe i'll do it i have another video i'm filming this month that i need plants to repot so maybe i'll just save it for that oh my gosh but i do want to just water these because it's been kind of a while since i've given them water okay i'm gonna get these plants back into here like I really want to make this look a little nicer, but for right now, I'm leaving it as my area with um, plants with spider mites. So I'm just gonna let it be ugly for now. So we'll do that guy. I know I definitely want to get a spider mite packet or spider mite sachet onto this one. Ah, uh, no. I want it like that. Um, I do have this whole... Oh, dude. Oh, no, here. I feel so bad. I used the wrong... Oh, here. Okay, because this thing is filled with mites, so 
I'm actually going to put this up here and let them let them go. I think I'm just gonna hang this one like this on the top <laughs> and really let it, maybe I'll do that for this one too. I feel like that might be enough for this little area because then if the leaves are touching, they should be able to, in theory, move from one plant to another. Oh, this UPI is already stressing me out, you guys. I really like this plant, but with these long petioles, I'm not quite sure how long it's gonna last in my collection. Um, I'm just, I'm on the stress-free train right now, and I just don't really need, I don't need to be inconvenienced. <laughs> All right, so that is watered. Now I'm gonna water up here. I need to, ugh, I almost wanna like take everything out. Um, the orientation of everything in here kind of gives me the ick a little bit. Like I kind of feel like one of these plants need to move out and I just don't know who. Oh, that thing is covered in spider mites. Oh good, okay. So maybe I'll leave it cause I don't really want to touch anything. So I do need to, I can see spider mites on my plants in here. I'm not surprised um, considering it's so close to the ones down there. I do want to elevate my soterini a little bit though. I'm just going to quickly water and then I'll start spreading packets. I'm going to just chop off this fur deck leaf. Um, I don't know, I posted this on my Instagram story, but my newest fur deck leaf has green and quite a bit of it so i'm so happy i feel like my my prayers have been answered This is my first time um, really filming in the plant room ever since moving things around and it's so difficult to film in this corner because it's right up against the wall and I have no space to move. But as you guys can see, I have two emergent leaves coming in. I swear my patty and my hetero, they are like this. They're synced on the same cycle. It's like they get their periods together and they always push out new leaves at the same time and are almost always in like the same exact phases of unfurling. My patty is just a little bit quicker, but it's actually quite nice to see some um, some length or like some leaf growth in on both of these plants that are looking significantly larger than the ones before, so I'm really, really happy about that. Also, my um, Longicimilobum is still very much alive and well doing okay, as is my Alaphaglossum, which is back here. I know you guys can't really see it. My Albi, Albi, I always say that, Albo Epi is doing pretty well. I have a seedling back here and I don't know who it is. An Anthurium. I have no idea whatsoever and there's two of them. I know it looks freaking wild and crazy in here and that's because I am going to be reorganizing it maybe not in today's video not today's video maybe not today but maybe that will be what we do in the last day of week of which i think is just gonna be until tomorrow I am so happy to be back on the floor. I can't even tell you guys. So I'm gonna start emptying out everything in this EXO that we're working on. I'm gonna water and then I'm just gonna set them aside since I need to give it a good clean in there. And I'll just give you an update on how everything is doing and maybe things might need to be repotted, I'm not sure. The first one that I have, first one that I have in there is this guy from Amanda and I cannot for the life of me remember who this is, but I probably should just be labeling plants as I go. I know I posted it on my Instagram once, I think. Oh yeah, Stylo 
stylochatin cardifolius stylocatin is it stylochatin or stylocatin stylocatin cardifolius cordifolius i'm gonna label that actually i should probably repot it it's at like the end of the pot so Maybe before we even style things in there, I'll repot things that need to be repot since um, I just want everything that's in there to be set and ready to go. Another one that I have is the, um, what I believe is a Holtonianum, Holtonianum from Amanda. Speaking of Holti, Alice has given me permission to chuck this guy to the wind. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I can't look at this thing anymore. I'm... I'm probably not gonna throw it away, but I'll just, I'll include it in my plants that I'm gonna sell. This is one that I don't know the idea of. I recently got it from Lauren and she got this in an import and was like, this seems like a plant that you'd really like. And she was right. So um, this is the newest leaf that just came out and it's actually quite, quite big. I'm surprised. Um, it gives me very Mexicanum vibes. Maybe that's why I haven't been missing my Mexicanum a ton because this is kind of like a close cousin. So this one is just living in Lekka. I don't see why I can't just leave it in Lekka for the time being. So I'm not going to move that. I will give it some water though. Um, I probably should move this out too. It's got some roots. But, ow, it also has an emergent leaf. I definitely want to repot this one. My philodendron serpents, this one it is also going to be chucked to the wind or just sold. I don't know. I just want it out of my house. My Dioscoria discolor is kind of growing like crap right now. I haven't been really enjoying this plant the way I used to. Ever since it kind of went downhill, it never really looked the same after that. So I'm not, I don't know what I want to do. It's giving me the ick right now. I know that it's still kind of like growing back. I took a bunch of cuttings for a friend recently. And so it is looking quite bald, but um, I'm not really happy with the growth in Lekka. I feel like it had way more robust growth and it just had nicer leaves when it was growing in pond. So that one might be one that I repot too, or I might just like cut it back down to a single leaf and just start over and just do away with the rest of that. This is my Uliarum Don Burnsii from Lauren. This is what I call my Donny Darko plant. And I can actually see that it's pushing out three new growth points. So this is a new leaf right here. And then there's like two other, two other growth points coming in, which is really cool. So I'm gonna chop off this ugly leaf. And I really want to repot it. I feel like this is just not the right, this is just not the right vessel for it. And I kind of want to get it into soil instead of pond. But I don't know if I should be doing that while the new leaves are coming out or if maybe I should wait. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I don't think that this is like an anthurium. So this is probably going to be another one that I repot because I actually enjoy this plant a lot, like a lot, a lot. And then the last one, this is the product of using 99% um, uh, alcohol as a spray on an emergent leaf. I thought it was going to be okay because I've sprayed other philodendrons before, but this one just did not like it. So this is my Spirit of Sancti. There's a new leaf coming in, so I'm not too worried. So once this new leaf hardens and is fully out, I think I'm just going to chop this guy off because it actually triggers my trypophobia really bad. And this one is growing in a mix of tree fern fiber, soil, and pond. I can see some new roots in there, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to just let it do its thing. So really, the only plants that I need to repot are these two. My exo down there is so filthy, and I really want to show you how clean I can get it with my new... I think it's like a pumice stick or something, and it just takes off um, hard water stains like crazy but i feel like it's going to be so hard to film in this corner oh yeah this thing hated pawn i mean despite all the nasty roots i'm surprised that it's even pushing new growth i'm so confused so this just started as like a tiny little plant and now it's kind of 
turned into like a bunch i don't know the growth pattern of these really at all i don't know if it's similar to like if you've ever had a philodendron burly marks you know how that one just like pushes growth out of <laughs> wherever the hell it wants that's kind of the vibe that this is giving me right now i'll give you a closer look once all of these roots are gone also i should mention i think this video is going to go up at the same time that um my cbc feature is going up so i haven't really talked about this i don't i didn't really tell anyone actually i definitely don't think i mentioned it here but cbc gem and cbc life that's like a network here they did this cool little feature on canadian plant parents so they went to like a few people from around canada like went to their houses showed their collections did these little interviews and i was really lucky to be a part of that series so i think my episode is out today i will link it in the description it's on the cbc life um youtube channel i think they said that there was a possibility it could be available on their streaming platform at some point but that wasn't like a guarantee or anything so yeah at least like everybody can watch it and you like don't have to be in canada so that's pretty cool they um they came here it was a documentarian that came in to interview me and film and she's like mega mega talented so i will say that i'm not feeling <laughs> at this point having haven't not having watched it yet i'm not feeling super confident in my interview because oh no i broke this off oh well i'll just stick it in the pot um so yeah, I just wasn't feeling very confident because it was my first time like actually being interviewed by someone else and like I didn't know the questions going into it beforehand. It was very, very like unscripted and you know, thinking of answers on the fly and I was really nervous and I felt a bit out of my element because when I film, it's like I'm usually in control. I'm the one you know in charge of everything and i was just really again just out of my element and not really feeling too confident and so i don't know i feel like i answered some of the questions really weird <laughs> and i'm just hoping that it all comes together and they cut out pieces where they can tell i'm like visibly uncomfortable i'm not sure if i'd ever do something like that again unless maybe i had more creative control over it in terms of like being part of the creative process and being able to answer things in a way that felt comfortable for me i think it was different being interviewed by a documentarian because you know they have like a different vision to how it's all going to come together and for me i'm very just candid and i don't talk very formally and i don't know i just i didn't feel like I could be super myself and this is not a reflection on CBC or uh, the documentarian that came in to interview me. I think it's more so just like me in general feeling still very uncomfortable in front of a camera and so this is my first time in front of someone else's camera and it was just so nerve-wracking. So I hope it came together. I'm like so nervous for it to come out like to the point where I'm like I don't even know if I want to watch it. Like, I may just have a friend watch it and be like, how was it? How bad was it? <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, I was really grateful to be included um, of all of the, like, really, really popular um, Canadian plant people in this country, like, to be included in such a small, limited series. It was very, like, wow, why me, you know? But yeah, anyway, my episode is out today. It should be out today. And if it is, I will link it in the description. Please go give it some love. I would hate for like, <laughs> to not get like any views on it. That would be so embarrassing. Okay, the roots on this look really good. This looks just like, <laughs> they look like little radishes or like little organic carrots or something. It probably could be chopped, to be honest. If I want, do I want to chop it though is the question. Oh, my back hurts. 
like there's so much rhizome like I feel like this could be one that I propagate and sell but I don't know how this works like are there auxiliary buds I'm completely like I'm such a noob I can definitely see some little bud looking thing so you know what I think I am going to risk it and chop it because there's so much going on here for like a single leaf plant I hope that it doesn't throw a fit but who really knows so I've got one here one little carrot and then I think I'll do a second one this little guy and I might even like sell this this one right here this is part of the Ulierum Don Burnsii. So let's try and, without breaking the whole thing, I want to rip off these old petioles. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, um, like I said, I'm gonna move these to a tree fern fiber soil mix just because it has not been living its best life in pond. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put the propagations into these cups. Since I'm running low on my parfait cups, I've been selling all of my plants in parfait cups, but I really like using this in my own collection, so I don't really want to give them away. But actually, let me repot my plants first because that is priority. And I'll be inoculating these with great white probably. So in this mix is um, soil, fine perlite, fur bark and tree fern fiber and a bit of worm castings. I'm gonna stick it at the end of the pot here because it's a crawler and I just want it to have some space to continue to grow. Um, is anybody watching the new Goosebumps uh, series on Disney Plus? I um, am on the third episode now, and I think there's only five episodes in season one. I actually really like it. I thought that it might be, because of you know the whole overall theme of Goosebumps books, it's like werewolves and goblins and those kinds of, those kind of things. I thought maybe it might be corny because, I don't know, it's really obviously geared for children just kind of weird but yeah aimed at kids but I think that they did a good job of kind of adultifying it and making it enjoyable for like the older generation like my generation but still having that nostalgic feel of goosebumps there are definitely spook factors to the series that um, are like a good healthy amount of creepy with still the right amount of just like oh that's a full-on like goblin <laughs> I, I definitely think it's a show like if you're if you scare easily I don't think that this is gonna like really freak you the hell out I think it's just like a nice light-hearted thing to watch around Halloween so I've been enjoying it yeah I think it's been good I have no idea what to do with this thing it's like how deep do I how deep do I bury it I'm definitely going to be labeling these because I'm getting annoyed with myself with how many plants are in my collection that I'm like, this is a, yeah, I don't know what this is. And then when I'm editing it, I'm like, you are useless. You know what I'm going to make right after I'm done filming is a pot of egg drop soup. That is what I want right now in my belly with this weather. Oh my gosh. I wish that I could just like take my computer and plop it onto my dining table and work from there, but that is way too much work. I'm hoping in the next place that we live that my office space slash plant room, like even if it's not, like even if our next place isn't as nice as our place now, I would be so happy to just have like a window in my plant room slash office. I feel like that would just like change everything for me. Okay, so now I'm going to pot the three propagations. These little carrot roots, whatever these are, they're so freaking funny. I love them.
Oh my god, I just ran out of <laughs> of my substrate. That is so absolutely upsetting. And look at how tiny this little thing is. You know what? I'm going to make it work. Watch this. What I'm going to do is scrape every last bit of this. I'm going to mix a little bit of this pond. There's no way I was about to make a completely new batch of stuff for this tiny little nugget. So let's see, let's see if I can do this. Yep, that works. Amazing, made it work. And it was actually the perfect size. I think, I think this cup would have been way too big for that. Um, I just got an email from my my manufacturer, my supplier for my merch and was they were just congratulating me on like a milestone in terms of like profits. And they said that um, it's something only 10% of creators on our platform achieve, which I don't know, makes me so emotional. Um, I'm not kidding you guys. You guys like blew, you guys, you guys freaking blew it out of the water for this, um, for this run. So not me starting to cry again. So I'm going, they, they're giving me credit to order another sample. So I think I'm going to get the, um, I think I'm going to do a Tales of the Thrips sweatshirt in the Midweight Pigment Dyed Crew Neck. I love the way this looks and it was uh, recommended to me by my industry friends. I have a ton of friends who are in like the garment apparel business and they were like, if they have this skew, you have to get it because that sweatshirt is, or that crew neck is the best. So I think I'm gonna do a Tales of the Thrips. Now, I just don't know which color. I don't know if I wanna do the, the green or like one of the beige color. I don't know, I don't know. There's so many good colors. Okay, what was I doing? Oh yeah, labeling. I, post I posted this um, labeler on my Instagram story during Prime, on Prime Day, because it was such a good deal. And if you bought one, you're gonna love it. I promise you won't regret it. These plant tags are from North Shore Tropicals. They are clear acrylic tags. Sorry, P Pudge, put that away. His red rocket is all the way out. And now it's touching my floor. Pudge, put it away. Go. Gross. I love dogs, but the red rocket is, <laughs> I'll never get used to it. Um, so yeah, she has these clear plant tags that I love a lot and I've been using it for all my plants so I used to just like put the label directly on the cup but then it was like such a hassle to have to make a new tag for it like when you repot and stuff like you don't want to just like peel it off I'd like to just move it to the new pot so I've been trying my best to I'm not labeling all my plants like obviously plants that like I know what they are but for plants like these where I'm not you know I'm not as familiar with them and I just, for whatever reason, cannot remember the name of it. I like to, I like to label it. I'm probably saying this wrong. Stylochaetan cordifolius. It's a mouthful, that's what she said. I need three of these. Two. Oh no. What happened? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No more tape. Oh no, I don't even know if I have more. Oh crap, oh crap. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm actually really, really confused right now because I know that I had an extra roll of white tape and now I don't know where it is. I thought it was in my plant cart and now it's not there. And now I'm questioning how organized I really am. Maybe I give myself too much credit because where the heck did it go? I have added some great white to this water and now I'm just going to inoculate it. Stylochaetin cordifolius. All right, now that everything is repotted that needs to be repotted, I'm going to start cleaning the XO. Okay, so you guys can see all of the like hard water stains right here. I know it's not 
super clear because of like I wish it was just like a solid black underneath so you could see but I'm just using this contraption which I will link in the description and you're just gonna add some water and then you just scrub I'm going to mute it because the sound it makes is not pleasant It's like magic, you guys. Like before, I used to try and get it off with like a really uh, abrasive scrubber and I would go in with all these, you know, baking soda and crap, but nothing works like that stone. So now I'm just gonna be polishing it off with some Bonami, which is the best glass cleaner you can ever use. Moving camera angles around is the bane of my existence. <laughs> okay, so um, here's the grid that I have. It's a little rusty because it's been used and abused. Unfortunately, I don't have a link to this one because I got these from a store here called Umomo and they were like $3.50 each. I will pop in the dimensions of them here so that you kind of know the size relative to my XO. I have a bunch of goodies here that I have to work with. So obviously, I've got all of my fake plants. I think I wanna use the Spanish moss at the top and the Huperzia down at the bottom. Just cause the Spanish moss is so much bigger than the Huperzia. So let's set that aside. I think I'm also going to use, I think I'm probably gonna use both air plants in the top top exo along with the huperzia i have a whole bag here of just cork wood and driftwood i've saved over the years so i've got this nice big piece i also have like little ones like this guy in here that i can use i'm just trying to see who looks better with the huperzia i kind of like the dark wood with the Huperzia, although it looks kind of nice with the Spanish moss too. I've got this huge piece, which I think I'll save maybe for the top XO. I have a smaller piece here, which does, it clashes a little bit with the color of this driftwood, so I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. Although I like the way that this wood looks over this one like this one's a little plain and it doesn't have as many like nooks and crannies so now i'm kind of wondering if i even want to use this one i also have this piece of wood here that's really really cool but i think i'm gonna save this for the top exo because i'm kind of guessing i can mount it and then stick the air plants on here so maybe i'll just stick with um I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind these two together. I don't love it together, but I don't hate it. So maybe we'll try and make this work somehow. So I'm gonna change the angle and just kind of take you overhead so you see what I'm doing. Hopefully the mic can pick up my audio cause I'm not right in front of it. But I have clear zip ties here, which I'll be using. Don't mind the noise in the background. Vince is taking Pudge for his potty. So obviously it's gonna go this way. Um, I'm thinking maybe, which side do I like more? This side. Or like, kind of like this as the front. And I almost see it going from down like this 
Oh. Like that, and then maybe this kind of draped on there somehow. And then, now that I'm looking at it together, I'm like, I really don't like these pieces of wood together. I wonder if one of the darker pieces might be better, like this one. I almost like these two colors together more. And then I can just do like a random one right here. So let's try and get this mounted. I'm kind of liking it like this right here. I don't want to go fully straight. I kind of want to go a bit at an angle and then have the Hooperzia down here. I don't know if I should try and put the Hooperzia in now. I think it's just wire in here. So I'm almost thinking, I'm wondering if I can bend it. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna bend it like this. And then maybe get it into this top like that. And then I'll probably put some moss or something up here so that it's not so like, you know, obvious. All right. So that's in. Now I need to make sure I can mount this. Oh, I should have made sure the Hooperzia was facing the right way because there is definitely a back and a front. I think this is the back. Ah, oh, crap. Wrong way. Good thing I didn't tighten it all the way. Oops, it's still got its little price tag thingamabob on it. We need another. I think I might need to attach two of these together. Okay, I feel like that's on there. And then plants are going to be down here. So I'm almost wondering if it goes like, like that or something. I don't know the rhyme or reason. I do have a larger one. But this one's not as nice as this one, in my opinion. So I think I'm gonna... I kind of even like it sort of together as just like one piece rather than just like a random thing here. So maybe I'll go like this. I just don't know how I'm gonna secure this thing. Um, maybe I can try and secure it here. Your guess is as good as mine. Sorry, this is not the best angle to show this guy, but I'll give you guys a better look, obviously, once it's done. I might even need three of them linked together. So I think if I go like this and I just attach it down at the bottom, it should hold it if it's tight enough. I almost wish I got another tiny air plant for the bottom XO, but at least it's not as visible as the top. Like I actually want the top to look really nice and the bottom is just so I don't stare at the wall. So I'm not gonna overthink this one too much. Oh, fuck. I think I do need to secure it at the top, which kind of sucks ass because I didn't want to put anything there. Okay, you know what? Maybe I maybe I will use the air plant up here. I kind of have an idea. I'm hoping that under the grow lights that my... Oh my gosh, my hands look so dry. What the heck? Um, I'm hoping that under the grow lights that these air plants don't fade. Because Alice did bring up a good point before or like a couple days ago saying that, you know, air plants... Or not air plants. Um, fake plants tend to fade under light, but I'm wondering if that's just direct sunlight and not from like an artificial light I don't mind that it's not like the greatest I don't sorry I can't even see it I don't love it seeing all of this but what the heck are you gonna do I do have moss but I wanted to save the moss from my top exo I've got these little things which are kind of super cool I feel like I can like kind of hide the zip tie using them and I have quite a bit of it too. I probably didn't even need the air plant to be honest with you. But this is kind of cool. I just need to find a way to, a 
attach it now. By the way, this stuff is from the dollar store, this moss. And it's super, super pretty. I feel like dollar store moss is so overlooked because people think it's just like super fake, but it's not y'all. Okay, now I need to just attach this somehow. I don't wanna do something as permanent as glue, but I almost feel like I could just like oops, rest it. It might move once I pick this up, but I honestly think this might work for now. This stuff is super, super cool. Okay, let me cut off all of these things. Oh my gosh. I cut off the whole thing. I'm so annoying. I think I can put more down here. Like, look how cool it is. It's so neat. I feel like I can shove some down here. Maybe this way would be cooler. Or maybe the other way. That is looking pretty good. I know you guys can't really see it from that angle, but that's what it looks like. Okay, and now I need to cover this top one somehow. I'm not super worried about this bottom one because I think it'll be covered by plants. But this one up here is giving me the echo. I have this kind of moss. But now I'm almost feeling like it's kind of clashy. Like, should I just continue with that same moss I've been using, this guy? Or is that like too much? I don't know. I can't get over how like otherworldly this looks. I'm obsessed with it. So I'm wondering if I can like just tuck some into here and just conceal. <laughs> Conceal it. Okay, it's actually looking pretty, pretty good. Here is what it's looking like. I'm actually pretty happy with it. I'm not, I'm not too upset. I kind of wish I had a different kind of fake air plant to put maybe like over here somewhere. But overall, I'm not that mad at it. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's okay. I think I'm going to try and do one little extra touch because I don't think I'm going to be using one of these in the top EXO, but I kind of want to shove a little mushroom somewhere just for like a little peekaboo, a little peekaboo moment. I think right there or maybe up here somewhere. Yeah, maybe over here. Um, I'm dead. That's so cute. Stop it. Okay, I'm happy with this. I am. I think in an ideal world, I'd have something down here too, but that's that's if it was gonna be higher up and I didn't think that plants were gonna be covering it. So I, I give this like a solid seven out of 10. Very minimal effort with, um, I'd say a pretty high payoff. I think I only need two little suction cup things for that grid. Hopefully it's strong enough. I could add a third, but something is telling me two should be enough. Considering I don't really plan on hanging anything off the grid. I probably could, but maybe something that's like super, super light. Although these are actually quite heavy duty. Maybe this one goes up here instead because it's not wanting to stay. Oh no, I forgot to chop off one. Oh no. Come on, Sherms. Okay, but I need to cover this area because that's giving me the ichamabob. I also have this, which I actually think might work. It's kind of this like spongy green color and uh, also from the dollar store. I feel like it's, I feel like it's okay. Um, let's try and tuck some there. 
Maybe I'll put some up here so that kind of ties it together. Okay, so besides this little hoopersia that's kind of a bit long, I don't want to cut it though because if I ever want to move it into somewhere else, I do want to keep that length. So I'm just going to leave it. I think it's kind of cute. I think it's kind of a sleigh. I think it looks, I think it looks good. So now I just need to pop the plants in and see who's gonna go in here. Okay, I decided I'm gonna move my gigas into here because I need to alleviate some space in the top anyway, or on the top XO. And then I'm also gonna be moving my new mellow in here as well. But I need some, I need some levels. I'm gonna be using plastic cups because I don't really wanna be using my nice, um, glass cups just for an exo that's in my plant room so that will go here I think that's tall enough and then I want to get maybe my mellow slightly higher I'll cover that let's get this guy higher as well ah uh, frick maybe this goes there. Um, I'm gonna stick this dude down here. Same with my Uliarum Don Burnsii. Spiritus is giving me the ick right now, but we know that she's gonna grow out of it. So let's give her some grace and some time to glow up. I have a bit of room down here. I think I can do this guy. This one wouldn't be a bad one to actually hang. So maybe I'll hang this in the top XO. So this is my Begonia Lubersii and it's actually finally growing really well. I think I'm gonna chop off this leaf cause it's blocking all of the new leaves that have grown in. And honestly, that is it. I think I'm so used to like overloading my XOs to the point where like you just can't really see what's going on. but. I think I need to like embrace minimalism now that I don't have as many plants and you know at least now things will have room to grow they won't get squished on each other I'm just gonna use my phone to give you guys a better look because it's hard to do it on my regular camera but yeah I think the backdrop looks so much better now that it's not just like a white wall I really hate seeing all of this too. I think like eventually I'll maybe do another grid on the side and then at least I can hang things from the side because I don't like seeing all of these wires and that plug. But yeah, now everything in here has more breathing room and even though I'm not used to it looking so barren, I think it at least looks better than what it did before. Oh, and then I'm gonna just put maybe two sachets in side here so let's do one maybe on the gigas I think I can hang it from from here because I think as long as it's touching the plant also sorry for all the noise in the background Vince is um having his lunch and then I think I'll hang one from here so obviously things are gonna look super crazy for a while because I have sachets hanging like this but I would much rather at least get use out of my mite um, rather than, you know, have something that's aesthetically pleasing and have them go to waste. I could see them like crawling around. They're so cute. If you guys are like on the fence about using predatory mites, especially spickle mites, swirsky, swirsky mites, um, mites that uh, target thrips and spider mites I promise you they are not scary at all they're actually quite cute and you hardly even notice them unless you're looking they're microscopic so anywho two two sachets in here are good because I really don't even think any of these have spider mites maybe that one might but even then I'm not even a hundred percent sure I've made quite the mess in here but I'm not even gonna bother cleaning it because we're gonna do the same thing tomorrow and focus on the top exo. Hopefully that one goes as smoothly as the bottom one did. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm excited to see what I can do with the top one because right now it gives me the ick. So I'm gonna go, Vince is having lunch. I need to have lunch, I'm starving. But um, yeah, I'll meet you back here tomorrow. 
I have to keep track of the time today because I need to leave in about an hour. I have a little bit under an hour to film this last part because I have to be at an appointment. So, um, like I said, we're going to be working on the last EXO today. I think that I'm going to do two grids. I think I'm going to do one on the back wall and um, on the right side glass. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the plan is yet, but we're just going to wing it as we go. So just as a reminder, oh man, I've got these two to work with and an air plant. I believe I'm going to be using this kind of cork cork wood because I've got two different ones here and then I would have loved to try and incorporate this I just don't know how how it's gonna work but we will see so here's my plan I think I want to do it'll be like this right imagine it like that basically I think I want to do sort of like a thing in the corner maybe like over here do like a piece of cork wood here maybe one over here and then have like the big piece of wood here and like hold the air plant I'm not a hundred percent sure yet so let's work on I'm almost wondering if I'm trying to think of the best way to do this so that it makes sense cohesively first off anyway i need to give you guys a better angle because this is just it's not giving i'm gonna work on the floor so that i have more space and i want to work on them side by side so that i can see exactly where things are going i'm kind of contemplating do i want to do something on the left side or the right side maybe i'll do it on the right side since the other exo has something on the left okay so here's what i'm thinking just keep in mind this is going to be the right hand side glass and this is the back glass so what i had thought is doing something like like this right here and then maybe this thing up here somehow like there's a lot of ways that i could configure this piece of wood so that this air plant can essentially fit in it and just sit on it like this but I don't know like the best way. Like I feel like that kind of makes sense. And then it can just sit like here. I am gonna have to like, I think I can cut this somehow cause it's a bit too long. And then what do I wanna do with this one? I'd like to put this maybe somewhere down here or even like at an angle like this. And then I could even maybe sit something in there, like a plant or something, because it has a bit like of a U shape. I could like sit a pot on it, I think. So let's get things placed first. My, oh yeah, I'm just gonna use zip ties again. I don't love the idea of using zip ties because you can see everything, but now that I'm looking at my second EXO, I feel like it kind of blends in okay once all the plants are in there. I just need to hustle. It's raining pretty hard today, so I'm kind of anticipating traffic to be slower. You would think that like in a city like where I live or like in a country where I live where it's just like raining most of the year that people would know how to drive in the rain, but they don't. And there's always like a million accidents on the road. What I think it is, is not even just people being like overly cautious to the point of paranoia, but there are people who don't understand the whole like the roads are slipperier <laughs> especially people in like big trucks i see them just like flying on the road you know and then you see that they hit like a, a puddle and then they hydroplane and it's like hello what did you think was gonna happen okay now the question of how i'm gonna mount this guy here i almost feel like there's probably a spot Cause there's so many like holes in this thing i bet i could secure it like and then i can probably just like shove some moss in here to cover it up can you even see sorry i'm not even looking at the viewfinder okay so that part is in 
but I kind of feel like this right side is gonna get too heavy. So how can we support you? Okay. How can I help you stay up? I kind of see another hole here that I can use, but I don't know if I'll be able to cover it with the air plant. And then the last one, I think I said it was gonna go like, like this. Just sort of at an angle. I think the only way is gonna be to just secure it right here, which kind of sucks because it's gonna be hard to cover. But I'm hoping that maybe a plant will sit here or something. So here is what the right side grid looks like. Now I need to try and cut this. Watch me ruin my scissor. I'm pretty sure it's just wire in there. Unless it's like a really big one. Oh, look at that. I did it. Oh, that was so easy. Um, honestly, I, I probably should place things once they're already in the EXO, but I just want to give you an idea of what I'm thinking of. So that covers that zip tie pretty well. Oh, uh, you know what? I placed it a little bit too high because now I think it's going to touch the top of the EXO. So I'm going to have to place this one a little bit lower. But I don't really want to have to move it. Damn it, I'm gonna have to. Let's just do it right. I need to move this one a little bit lower. All right, so now that I've moved it down a bit, I think this is gonna fit a lot better and it won't hit the top of the EXO. Now, um, I already know where that's gonna go, so I think I just need to place my moss now. And I think I wanna do a combination of the same moss I did at the bottom. Oh, my Spanish moss. I forgot about the moss, you guys. So I think this will cover pretty much all of, I think I wanna do it like in the corner, like this. Um, but you know what? It's not gonna cover the zip tie, unfortunately. I wanna do it like that. And I can probably secure it just in here. And I could probably cut a little bit of this moss off and use it on the right side too. Because this is quite large. Like, look at how big this is. Because I can put some, like, maybe to cover this area. Okay, that still looks good. And then I can, like somehow oops that looks kind of weird I don't really know what I want to do here like, I almost feel like it has to start at the top but then it's not really covering anything so I could just go like this and kind of just let it hang like that like I'd love to do something like right here to cover the zip tie and then maybe one up here should I use a spongy one? I'm not sure how much I love this spongy moss with the with the air plant. It's not terrible. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it's not terrible. Okay, I think that's gonna have to do for now. I'm not I'm not wanting to go like too too crazy. And I can also add moss like once I'm in there, but I need to. What time is it? Oh, I think I have time. Um, I'm gonna change the camera angle and we are gonna get the EXO cleaned up. Oh my gosh, a new leaf is coming out. Look at her. Look at her. I'm so excited. I've wanted to see one of these new leaves come out so bad because they look so creepy but so cool. This thing must be happy. I didn't even notice that it had so many roots on it. This one's in a mossy, super mossy tree fern fiber pond mix, so like that alocasia um heterophila dragon's breath not doing not doing amazing i do think i need to get it out of here but um this is the newest leaf hopefully i can get some size on this thing
and I cannot get over how good this new leaf is. Oh my gosh, this this one is still like, has to be one of my favorite philodendron of all time. These are the kinds of philodendron that exist that like always bring me back. And like, I just am reminded how much I'm just a philodendron girl at heart. Now that it's in here, I actually think I want to switch it. I'm not really feeling the orientation of this and I think I'm going to do one higher and one lower. But now I kind of want to move the Spanish moss. Oh no. Okay, yeah, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this over here, I think. I think this is gonna be better. I also have an orchid that I need to hang. I almost wish I could mount this onto here, but we're not gonna do all that. <laughs> now I don't know where this can go. I guess it can go over here. I'd like to cover this wire. It's kind of giving me the ick. Maybe I'll just go like that. I still, ow. I still can't believe this thing is alive. It's actually been pretty easy. It's never, it's never flowered for me ever, but I actually bought this for the foliage anyway. So I was gonna sit something on top of here, but I think it's gonna just be a little bit of an overkill. So I'm gonna just start placing plants back in and see what it looks like. I have space for a pretty small-ish plant down here. I'm gonna stick this one in here for now. This is the one that's been in here, but I think this one is next in my list of plants to get rid of. Um, it's given me some some nice leaves, but I'm not. I'm just not loving it, and it's sizing up so slow. Sizing up. It's actually sizing down. And um, of all the variegated plants, the white princess is just not one of my favorites, but. 
We'll just keep her in here for now just to like let it fill in a little bit of space. And to my knowledge, I don't have any spider mites in here and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm going to disperse three sachets. Well, there's actually going to be four in here. There's one on my Londosimilobum and I'll put one on my... Uh, can I put this? I guess I could just hang it up here and just let them find their way. And then I'll put one on my patty. Oh, there's already one on my patty. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put this somewhere else. This is what the finished product looks like. Not my best work, I'm not gonna lie. I don't love it, but I think it's infinitely better than what it was before. There's a good chance that one night when I become too hyper fixated on it, I'll probably rip it all down and start over from scratch. But for now, this will do. But yeah, this is what it looks like now. And then also down here, I also added a second grid on the right to try and conceal the plugs on the right. Hasn't worked that great. I think I could maybe move the orchid down here, the hanging orchid, but we're gonna leave it for now. I had to get out of the plant room. It was like, it feels like it's like 20 degrees warmer in there, but I am done. I need to take a break in my plant room for a while. I spent all week in there. I do think it's looking a lot better. There's still a lot of things that I need to do in there or that I want to do. There's ideas that I have like for my Rudsta. I don't love the setup of my Rudsta on my old Ikea coffee table. I think it looks a little weird, but the only reason I've kept it is because it houses my three bins of like soil and um, pawn like perfectly. So that's something I'm gonna have to think about for a later time, but we are done for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you got some inspiration. Thank you to everyone who ordered my merch. Um, I just checked in yesterday and it looks like if you ordered on merch launch day, merch launch day, some of them are already shipped, which is crazy. So thank you so much. Um, when you guys receive, I'm so nervous for you guys to get them. Like obviously I know what the quality is. They're my designs, but I don't know. I'm just so nervous. Like I'm, I'm scared that you guys are going to get it and be disappointed or something. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I think by the time this video goes up, some of you may have already received it. So let me know how it goes. Thank you again for watching. If you did like it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.